in the barn. We're about two minutes away from starting our show. So if you have a role in the opening ceremony, we need you to come f to the barn or to the arena. And everybody else be putting your uh, final touches on. We're going to start with senior showmanship because there is no previous winners. So we'll start with that first class and uh, we'll be going in about two minutes. We're ready to get started, so if we could have your attention, we're going to start the morning with the Star Spangled Banner, and it will be performed by Terry Joe Butler. So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight were the ramparts we watched. Were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet away wore the land of the free and the home of the brave and now we have an opening prayer by Blake Butler. Ella Collis. Sorry, Ella. Given the wrong name. <laughs> okay, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful day you've given us today. We thank you for letting everyone come out and support us today and support the youth fair. Please give us strength and courage to come out and show today, Lord. We thank you for all the blessings you've given us this year and letting us be together and have a great time. Please keep everyone safe today and let everyone have a great time. In your name I pray, amen. What a great way to start. Thank you, Terry, Joe, and Ella. Our first class today is our senior showman, and we're going to start with the uh, first section. We have five exhibitors, Mackenzie Yates, Hannah Camby, Taylor Horn, Lacey Linton, and Ashton Lazarick. in today you can see we we have a um, our judges entered the ring and that's John Bob Spiker and who is a graduate of West Virginia University with a bachelor's degree in agriculture business and economics John used to serve as the president of the West Virginia Angus Association and is currently president of the West Virginia Livestock Roundup which is the longest running sale of its kind in the United States he has evaluated livestock throughout the East Coast for over 23 years, as well as groom cattle all over the United States. He resides in Jane Lou and manages a herd of commercial Angus cattle and a flock of commercial haired ewes on his family farm with his wife, Kate, and their daughters. Welcome, John Bob.
they're in order. Or... Yes, they are. If you're following along in our program and you want to, or the program's on the front rows, if you haven't got one, there's some floating around. If you don't have a program, 33 to your far right is Mackenzie Yates from Valley Stars 4-H Club. Behind Kenzie, 17, is Hannah Camby, and she's from Tomahawks 4-H Club. Then we have Taylor Horn, 50, and Taylor is representing Hedgesville's FFA chapter. Lacey Linton, 27, from the New Seekers 4-H Club, and a little birdie told me Lacey is aging out this year. And, and then we have Ashton Lazarick from the Hedgesville's FFA chapter. She's 65 and she just moved to the center. If you've not been here before, showmanship is where the individuals have fitted their animals and it's based on presentation. Not so much the confirmation of the animal itself, but how well those individuals are uh, presenting their animals. Are they clean? Are they well behaved? Are they doing what they're supposed to do? Just like a well trained child. Well, first of all, I want to thank you for having me here. And this is a real nice class of senior showers to begin with. I think that uh, you have to appreciate how each of them came out here, calm and collected. They've got their animals broke well. Some of them are not cooperating quite as well, and that gives you a little bit of a disadvantage in showmanship. But for the most part, I love your all's presentation. Um, your animals are clean. Again, you're really calm and collected out here. You're not letting, when they do act up, you're gathering yourselves and not letting them get the best of you. We're going to begin with the young lady to my left, and I'll, I'll try to do my best to explain why. She had an advantage in spacing more than the rest, and in, in a small ring like this, it's harder to really pay attention to your spacing, but it's, it's even more important to do so in a small ring like that. And you've done a good job keeping your distance. For example, when you was on the rail back here, you left, you left some space in front of you, and you was a, the only one that set your animal up on the profile with the hind leg back just a little bit, which, which told me you was aware of how they need to look on a side profile. I think that they just look so much better when you can get their front legs straight underneath of them, at more or less at a, at a 90 degree angle, and the back legs offset just a little bit. And because of your spacing and how you set your animal up, I think it gave you an advantage. Now, I didn't like when I walked in front and you changed hands as I walked in front of your animal. I'd rather you not change hands until you set your animal into motion. But aside from that, I thought you did the best presenting your animal today. And you'll be coming back for the, to pick out your senior champion. Next three young ladies are really close to me. And I think that the things that I would improve in the way they show is is universal among you three. I think that uh, spacing will help. I love your eye contact. You've had great eye contact. You've been aware of your animals, but I'd like to see you make some corrections throughout a showmanship drive. For example, when they get too close like this, you know, it's kind of hard for a judge to analyze them. That's why spacing is so important in a small ring, even more so. And it's harder, but it's even more so important. Um, some of the things I said about the young lady where she excelled in this class would help you three. Just a little more aware of how your feet are placed, a little better spacing within the ring in terms of allowing space for the judge to get between the animals. But you do a great job of eye contact, really pleasant to work with out here in the ring. I didn't think there's a lot of separation among you three. You did a nice job, but those two things that the young lady did better in this class would help you, help you three. And then it'd be really hard to judge this class. Next young lady, just kind of a little bit of a disadvantage because her steer's not wanting to cooperate today. Maybe he hadn't had the exercise he needs or, or whatnot, but it just puts you to, at a slight disadvantage in a showmanship class. But I appreciate you're still smiling and you handled it well. Please give these young ladies a round of applause. Placing first and coming back is Ashton Lazarick. Second, Lacey Linton. Third, Taylor Horn. Fourth, Hannah Camby. And fifth, Mackenzie Yates. Our next group in the ring is Brianna Jenkins, Skylar Yates, Seth Painter, Taylor Barrett, Julie Snyder, and Dugan Payton.
Our first entry is Brianna Jenkins from the Scrabble Scrambler. Follow that by Skylar Yates from Valley Stars 4-H Club. Then we have Seth Painter from Wotonka's 4-H Club. Follow that by Taylor Barrett from Scrabble Scramblers 4-H Club. Then we have Julie Snyder from Spring Mills FFA Chapter and Dugan Payton from Spring Mills FFA. Peyton Dugan. Well, how about that? It's Peyton Dugan, and I knew that. Sorry, Minda. You know, our kids are very diverse, our, our young folks are very diversified in that all of them are very talented in lots of other ways too. So as you look around the fair today, you'll see many of their abilities, not just in this ring, but also throughout the fair. Another nice class of senior showmanship. I think that I could separate these in three different groups of showers within this class. The young ladies to my left will be coming back in the first two slots for the champ to pick for a champion senior showman. And then the reason, I'll, I'll try to explain brief briefly the re reason why they are and you're not. And I think it's pretty close between the four ladies at the top of this class. The young lady with the, with the red steer to my far left, uh, she, she was on point pretty much since she came in. There wasn't many mistakes. Really nice balance of eye contact, but being aware of her animal. And she shows some little intangibles that she knows how her steer needs to be presented. And she doesn't give, doesn't give the judge a bad look at, at, throughout the showmanship here. And it's just a, a good quality. It's kind of hard to teach. And same, same with the next young lady with the gray calf. Just really quick to get on point. The legs, for the most part, have been set up right throughout the showmanship. You've had good eye contact. I like your transition as you go into motion when you switch hands. I like how you navigate around the ring with your show stick. Just a lot of, you guys cover a lot of bases and do a lot of things right. 
next two young ladies, not much separation. Both of you do a nice job. Just little things I'd change. For example, when we pulled the kef out in front of you, I'd like to see you go ahead and fill that gap up when the judge is looking on a profile. And the reason is in a class when there's a bunch of them standing head to tail and then you have a gap, it's kind of harder to analyze them. So when one pulls out in front of you, go ahead and fill that hole up and that will help you in showmanship. You did a lot, everything else pretty well, I thought. Nice job of showing. Young lady in fourth, I think you, you had a little bit of a disadvantage because of the way your heifer was acting. It didn't allow her get, kind of giving you a hard time, didn't allow you to maintain the constant eye contact that you maybe like to have seen in a showmanship class. I maybe would change the way you're holding your stick just a little bit instead of up in your elbow, just holding it where it's under, you're holding it where you, the end of your stick is underneath your elbow, for lack of better words. Just a little more comfortable position if you need to rub the underline instead of just the brisket. But minor changes, you do a nice job. And I think it, if you take that advice that you'll easily be coming back in the next in the next round of showmanship. But next young man, I think you just need a little more experience. I noticed you had good eye contact. When you had your animal set up on the profile, you kind of forgot to double check how his feet were placed and a little more experience in knowing how they need to be placed. And the young lady on the end, again, when they don't cooperate in a showmanship class especially, it puts you at a disadvantage. Some things will help you show and if once your steer calms down, if you could extend your arm a little bit when you walk him, he won't be stepping on your heels and that'll help you in a showmanship class. Please give him a round of applause. Nice class of show. Placing first in that class was Taylor Barrett, second Peyton Dugan, third Julie Snyder, fourth Seth Painter, and fifth Skylar Yates. Your class is complete, and our next entries, at bar if you're in the barn, you want to be bringing them to ringside, is Kaylee Yates, Blake Butler, Reese Barrett, and Clayton Camby.
Here's another class of senior showers that I would kind of classify in three different groups, being the two to my left, the two in the center, and, and the two to my right. And I'll try my best to explain why. The young lady and young man to my left will be coming back to choose from for the champion senior showman here in just a minute. And I think as you watch them show throughout this class, against their contemporaries within this class. They're the most methodical. I think that they're the quickest on point. For example, the young lady, when they stopped on the rail, she didn't have to touch the feet. She walked him right into place and just showed a lot of, she, she was really collective and showed a lot of, of experience in the ring and just doing a lot of things right. Kind of hard to pick apart what she's doing. We'll try to here in a minute, but as far as the limited window, I've been able to watch you here. You've done everything right. You just haven't made any mistakes. Same with the young man beside her. They just kind of showed a little bit more experience compared to their contemporaries within this class in terms of where they position their body with their animal. When they set their animals into motion, they walk with their animal and they're just really collective and quick to get them on point. Really good eye contact and a nice balance of being aware of how their animals need to be. Just a nice job of showing with these top pair. Just little changes I'd like to make with the next, next two young ladies in this class. I'd like to kind of change the way you hold your show stick. You've, been, you've had good eye contact and a lot of times you had your steer set up right with the legs in the right position. I'd like to see you hold your stick a little bit different to where the, the base of your stick is not resting on your elbow. Just hold it to where you can manipulate it wherever you need to put it in a little smoother fashion, more natural fashion. And you'll see with the, with the seniors coming back how they hold their sticks and it'll get, kind of give you a good window of what I'm talking about. But that'll help you just the way you handle your stick when you get your animal parked, and especially in showmanship. Again, you do a lot of things right. Nice eye contact. You had your judge's side hind leg back. The front leg's down good most of the time. Just little little changes that'll help you get get come back next time and next time in senior showmanship but nice job and the next young lady I think I'd maybe of course the steers giving you a little bit of trouble but you handle it well you had his, his offside leg set back on the side profile I'd maybe change where you position your body a little bit instead of like for example right now instead of being directly in front of him just at a little bit more comfortable position keep your left hand as long as he's standing still keep your left hand on the halter instead of your right just little changes maybe relax you just a little bit but you did a nice job you handled everything well and he's giving you a hard time you gathered yourself you didn't let it get you upset i commend you for that nice job as far as that goes next young man another another um one that i changed the way you hold your your halter when you or on the standstill, I'd like to see you have your left hand on, the, on holding the steer's head and your right hand with the stick. When you go to walk him, just change hands. Walk him with your right hand holding him, and that'll help you in showmanship a bunch if you can just change that because you, you have great eye contact. You're pleasant to work with in the ring, and, but that's one thing that you've got to change for showmanship and the show. For example, right now, I would have your left hand holding him. That way you can step aside, use your right hand with the show stick, and that allows you to see your animal better and navigate around the animal better. Young lady on the far end, I just think it just took you too long to get your calf on point in the, within this drive. Like for example now, again I'd like to see you have your show stick to where it's, the handle is underneath your elbow instead of above your elbow and that will allow you to move it on the underline or the brisket in a smoother fashion. And again, like we said earlier, when they don't cooperate it just, it puts you at a disadvantage in showmanship. But that steer acts a little better, you, hand, you handle your show stick a little differently, you'll be real competitive. Please give him a round of applause. That was another nice class of senior showman. Placing the first in this class was Brianne Sawyer. She'll come back as well as Andrew Chapman. Third was Savannah Jenkins. Fourth, Brett Mung. Fifth, Summer Weaverly and Hunter Dunham. Our next class in the ring is 24, and that is Callie Yates from Valley Stars 4-H Club. Then we have Blake Butler from Arden's 4-H Club. Then we have Reese Barrett from Spring Mills FFA Chapter. And our last entry in this class is Clayton Camby from Tomahawks 4-H Club. After we, have a, after we have selected our top finisher in this class, we will show for overall senior showmen. And that will include 65 Ashton 
Lazarick, Taylor Barrett, 49, Peyton Dugan, 38, Brianne Sawyer, and Andrew Chapman. So those folks need to be bringing their animals back to ringside. Our senior champion showman will receive quite a few prizes and we'll go over that with uh, our senior champion will receive a gift card as well as cash awards and our reserve champions receive gift cards and cash and our third place finisher gets cash. I'm going to bring the young lady and the young man to my left back to choose for champion sen senior showman. And they did a nice job within this class. I think that they excelled in terms of being in control the whole time. I think these two individuals were the quickest to get their animal on point, knowing some of the intangibles in terms of how they, where they position their body to their animal and when they set them into motion, they're smooth in their transitions from hand to halter and switching hands. They're pretty quick to get them on point and they just were just, just that. They were quicker to get them where they needed to be compared to the next two within the class. Young man that, that is sitting in the third position here, he did a nice job getting a little frustrated with the steer. I think a couple things that will help you in terms of showmanship, for example, when you walk your steer down the center of the of the ring instead of walking backwards, you know, you was kind of walking your steer like this, just be in a more comfortable position where you can look over your shoulder at the judge at a kind of like a 45 from his head and just a little little minor details. When, when he does cooperate and allows you to set him up, getting his back feet right, just little minor details, but that'll help you in showmanship in the future. And the young lady with the brockle face calf on the far end, there's uh, three things that'll help you in showmanship. One is, you know how you struggle in getting his feet set up early on? A lot of times you can do that with your hand that's holding the halter. For example, if he needs to come forward, give him a little tug forward. If you need a foot backwards, tug that head backwards a little bit. A little better eye contact. 
will help in showmanship. And if you can extend your arm just a little bit as you're showing your animal, that'll help. He won't be running into you as much. You do those three things and you'll probably be at the other end of the class. But please give them a round of applause. And another nice class is showing. Placing first in this section was Reese Barrett, second Blake Butler, and both of those kids will come back. Then we have Clayton Camby third and Callie Yates fourth. So we're ready to show for our grand and reserve senior champion at this time. We need Ashton and they are right on time. We have Ashton Lazar. Yes. Is that Ashton Lazarick, we have Taylor Barrett, followed by Peyton Dugan, then we have Brianna Sawyer, Andrew Chapman, Reese Barrett, And our last entry in this class is Blake Butler. Your class is complete. If you're in the barn, we need the immediate, intermediate showman next. And we have two sections, so that's Tori Henry, Ella Collis, Reagan Barrett, Andrew Bohr, Owen Miller, Cheyenne Stickle, Rebecca Fox and Paige Knott on at ringside. Our winner of this section will receive a gift from Mid-Atlantic Farm Credit, a cash award from Farmers and Mechanics Insurance Company, and a cash award given in memory of Janice Cloud. Our reserve champion will receive a gift from Mid-Atlantic Farm Credit, and a cash award given in memory of Janice Cloud. And our third place finisher will receive a cash award given in memory of Janice Cloud. And if you have an opportunity, even if you're not an exhibitor and you see some of these folks who are sponsoring classes, be sure to thank them. Without sponsorships to this class, we wouldn't be able to present some of the awards that we have and are able to do.
in this senior drive, I, to me, I think the three that I brought out are the three to choose from, and it gets really close between these three and a couple other individuals within this showmanship class. Young man on this end, I think that you do a real nice job. I appreciate your intensity. You're pretty quick to get him on point. Um, there's just a few minor details that I'd change initially when we set them up side by side. I'd sure like to, I'm not one for over picking the legs. I think if you get them close, that that's better than moving them too much. But boy, you left his back legs spread out awful, awful far on the side profile. Or I mean, excuse me, when they were set up side by side, I'd sure like to see you narrow him up just a little bit so he would look better from the rear view. Because that's the main view you're getting when you're in that position. You had those legs offset an awful lot. Maybe like to give you a little extension from your animal when you set him into motion. And I think that's across the board with each of these individuals. And I'll explain why here in a minute. Next young lady, same thing as this young man. Early on when you're set up side by side, I don't like to see legs move too much, but boy, those back feet were really stretched out. And on that, on that side, when they're, you're set up side by side, the best view you can have is from directly behind them. And if they're offset too much, it just takes away from the way the profile of the recorder and the way they're made. And it it's, puts you a little bit of a dis, your animal at a little bit of a disadvantage. Again, I don't mind legs being not perfect, but they were just a little bit excessive. And I'd like to have seen you correct that. This young lady does really good. I wouldn't want to show against you. I, I think that these three really need to watch out. There's one thing that I'd change that I think will really help you in showmanship is a little bit more extension, especially when you set your calf into motion. If you watch, if you were watching through this drive as you was walking your steer, when he was putting his front foot down, it wasn't missing your heel very much. And that's hard to do. I, it, as you get bigger and stronger, it's easier. But that sure, when you set your calf into motion, I, I think it would sure help you to create a little more space between you and your animal. That will allow you a little more mobility to, to analyze your calf that he's that he's doing the right thing as he's walking whether you can look at him better compared to when you're close and it allows you some space to know where the judge is too everything else is spot on I wouldn't be a bit discouraged because you're gonna make it really hard on everybody in the senior drive in the future I think that spacing will help you a little bit there on the profile you certainly corrected it now but you had your you had your heifer against the rail you know if a judge wanted to go around there wouldn't have been any space and she just not cooperating the best maybe I love that you corrected the things that we talked about in class and again you're going to be hard to handle in, in showmanship but there's just little minor things that I change and that spacing issue in a senior class of showmanship will sure make a difference you know keeping it her like for example how she is now instead of against the rail but those are some minor changes I think that if you want as you watch this senior champion seniorship showmanship drive that you'll understand why each of these have came back the spacing has been great if you look as a whole the spacing has been really good for example if you look now they're set up really nice on the profile all of these seniors have had a good balance of eye contact and being aware of of their animal not not staring down the judge but keeping being aware of where the judge is at all times and being aware of their animal and they're they're really quick to quick to fix their animal when they get out of place but across the board to me these three did a little bit better of the things that i criticized you on than than you four did so i'm going to look at work these three a little bit i think it's probably a toss-up but I, I guess that's the hard part of being a judge i got to pick somebody i'm going to work these three a little bit I'd like to ask you four to exit certainly with a round of applause because each of you deserve to be out here that was a nice job of showing
I'll do something real quick within these three individuals I think there's there's very minor differences spacing is nice again eye contact and being aware of your animal has been very good a very nice balance we try to teach our girls to split their attention 50 50 half the attention on the judge half the attention on the animal um, they've, they've done all the little things right in terms of when they are locked in and make eye contact and put their stick on their animal their animals are right for the most part um, I think you've had a little more trouble getting yours set up throughout the drive, but you've handled it well. When you do stop and put your stick on it, that calf's set up how he should be. Um, I'm going to ask you to, to say something real quick on the mic, and it doesn't have to be long. Um, we're going to start with you because I've got all girls and I favor them, so you're going to get the tough spot. <laughs> but what I want you to do, and this is for each of you, we're going down the line, just name one thing that, that you guys can do to influence agriculture in a positive way from now on it can be it can be something as simple as as what you plan on doing in the future with education or or how you plan on conducting yourself or anything that you can do as long or as short as you want when you talk about it to say how you're going to influence agriculture in a positive way again it can be as long or as short as you want and you can talk about anything just it's got to be positive so I'm going to start with you, and I'll, I'll grab your steer, and you can make it as quick or as long as you want, just how you plan on influence, ag influencing agriculture in a positive way. Hello, everybody. My name is Andrew Chapman, and I'm part of the Mount Airy 4-H Winners uh, Club. And one way that I'd really love to influence the livestock industry, especially down the road. I'd love to get into the show cattle raising business. I think the sport is extremely fun. I enjoy it a lot. But I think what's really missing in uh, once you get to the jackpot season, not so much in the county fair setting, I'd really love to get into raising livestock for the kids to have fun. I think it's cool that it's competitive the way that it is, but I'd really love to make the sport as fun as possible for the kids. So that's how I would like to influence the livestock industry in the future. Good job. Thank you. Hello. My name is Peyton Dugan. I'm a member of the Spring Mills FFA and the Scrabble Scramblers 4-H Club. One way I would like to influence the agricultural industry is in the future I would like to go into livestock embryology, especially in sheep and goats and cattle. I think it is very neat how we can get so many different varieties even when they have the same mom and dad. There are so many ways we can improve just from going steers and heifers. Yes. Yeah, so that's how I would like to influence agriculture. And maybe one day I can raise better animals for myself as well as, well as those in my community. And we can have more competitive shows like this. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Everyone. My name is Taylor Barrett. I'm a member of the Scrabble Scramblers 4-H Club. I would really like to impact the agriculture community by giving kids opportunities that I didn't have when I first started showing. I didn't start taking livestock showing until very competitively until last year. I jackpotted my lamb almost every weekend and I learned so much as a showman and how to raise my animals and educate people in a proper way. I want to give younger kids this opportunity as well. I would love to start my own show cattle business and my club lamb business. Thank you, everyone. Uh, 
Well, that didn't help me much, but... <laughs> nice job, and if nothing else, it helps the audience see how, how high-quality kids we have out here within this senior showmanship. And I know I'm taking a while, but this is really a big deal, is that certainly with our family and, and whatever species you show, you can get so much more out of your animal when you have somebody on the stick that knows what they're doing, knows when to quit, when to, when to slow down, when to speed up. And these three do an excellent job. I think that any given day, any of these, these young ladies or this young man could win senior showmanship. Um, I'm going to go out and look at them a little bit more. There's just minor differences that I see in terms of showing, and, and a lot of times it comes down to me, it's almost like a race to get them right. When they're doing everything right, when they're handling their animal right, they're handling their stick right, they're maintaining pretty good eye contact, they're getting their animal set up, and they have good spacing, you can just look at them all day and just, and just r go in circles. So. A huge benefit is who is, gets on point the quickest. If you have a big show, they get their animal set up quick. The judge doesn't, doesn't get a bad look at their animal. You're at a huge, huge advantage to get your animal in place and where they look their best the quickest. And uh, sometimes I think it just boils down to that. But again, you need to maintain good eye contact throughout the show. That's an advantage, but don't ignore your animal. You three do an excellent job. I want to choose your first, second, and third in that order. But please give each of these individuals a round of applause. This is a really nice job of showing. Our senior champion showman is Taylor Barrett. Congratulations, Taylor. Reserve champion is Peyton Dugan. And placing third, Andrew Chapman. What a job well done by everyone. Intermediate showman, our first section of the intermediate showman into the ring, but I think we'll take a few pictures first. Assisting with our pictures today is Miss Caroline Cook, representing Hedges Martinsburg's FFA chapter and Tomahawk Warriors 4-H Club. She's Miss Youth Fair. Congratulations, Caroline. And again, we want to thank Mid-Atlantic Farm Credit, Farmers and Mechanics Insurance Company, and the Janice Cloud family for their contribution. We need our fir first section of intermediate showmen in the ring. Our first entry is 52, and that's Tori Henry from Spring Mills FFA chapter. Our next entry is 111, which is Ella Collis from Valley Stars 4-H Club. 
Then we have Reagan Barrett, 39, from Spring Mills FFA chapter. Then we have number two, Andrew Boer from Tomahawks 4-H Club. And I would remind the exhibitors, we've got a lot of entries, so utilize the whole ring. 36 is Owen Miller from Valley Forest Stars 4-H Club. 45, Cheyenne Stickles from Scrabble Scramblers 4-H Club. Then we have 198, and that's Rebecca Fox from Tomahawks 4-H Club, and Paige Knott from the Scrabble Scramblers 4-H Club. This is your class. We need to have the following intermediate showmen bring their animals to ringside. Eli Camby, Blake Puffenberger, Sam Mill Camby, Lindsey Wall, Spencer Byers, Cooper Knott, and Macy Butler. couple thank yous on behalf of the Beef Committee. We'd like to thank Todd and Bill Butler of Butler Farms for use of the generator. And we'd like to thank Lyle C. Tab and Boyd's Veterinary Service for bedding in the barns. So thank you to those folks for making the show a lot better. Also, we'd like to thank the Beef Show crew, and that's Rick Martz, Jeremy Glassford, Jacob Long, Shelby Silvius, and Bob May.
bring we're going to bring the three individuals in this first in this first class of this division. Three individuals to my left. You'll be coming back to choose champion within this drive. And and I I think we can reiterate a lot of things we said in the senior showmanship. Nice job of eye contact. Good job of being aware of your animal, how your animal needs to look. Um, the young lady in the third hole. Now you're out of position, but throughout most of the show you've been. You've had good spacing. Right now is probably the worst you've done, but up till this point you've done a good job with spacing, good job with eye contact, and the, the same with the young lady with the red steer. And we'll look at you three a little more here in a minute when you bring, we bring you back in. Next young lady, really nice job. You're doing an excellent job right now. Um, there's little minor things I'd change. For example, when you set your heifer into motion, the way you're holding your show halter is pretty close, which your left hand has your stick and the show halter and it's putting that show stick in an uncomfortable position in front of you. I'd like to see you extend it out more and that'll serve two purposes. You can use that free hand to raise the stick up and slow your heifer down if you need to or just put it comfortably at your side. You had a really tight space there and it limits you what you can do with your free hand. Something minor. You're doing an excellent job. Good eye contact and really nice job of showing. Next young lady, I want to say the same for you as the, as the lady that's on down with the brockle face steer. I don't like to see the halters balled up like that, and and the reason reason is some kids will do it with a rope halter. You know they'll see them balled up, and and you get something that gets startled in the ring, and they have those halters ball, balled up or a show halter balled up like that. You know there's a chance of getting it tangled up in your hand and and you know hurting a finger or something, and it just doesn't look as presentable for your animal, especially on the side profile when that halter is balled up like that or held up in a circle. Just let it let it hang down naturally and those lines will help the profile of your animal. You could have a little more extension in terms of your spacing from your animal. Just step out a little bit and this is the same for all three of you. Step out just a shade when you have that animal set up. You're in a good position now but earlier you was right next to his head. When you're real close to him, you just can't analyze their feet placement very well. If you get a little bit of extension with your arm that's holding them, it'll allow you to analyze your animal better and it'll be, it, will, it will help you not get in the way of the judge and obstruct his view of your animal. I could say that for all four of you. So those minor things, a little quicker on point, a little better with the feet placement, a little smoother in your transition with your hand and halter. For example, when you're stopped and standing still, you always want to have that halter, hold that halter with your left hand. When you're walking, you switch and walk with your right hand. Those are some minor things that'll help you, and hopefully, hopefully it makes sense and you come back in in your next showmanship and you'll do better. But really nice, nice group of kids to work with. Please give each of them a round of applause. Placing first in this class, Andrew Bohr. Second, Reagan Barrett. Third, Paige Knott. Fourth, Ella Collis. Fifth, Cheyenne Stickle. Sixth, Rebecca Fox. Seven, Tori Henry. And eight, Owen Miller. And we'll have Andrew, Reagan, and Paige brought back to ringside for intermediate heifer after this next class. Our second section of intermediate heifers, not heifers, these are showmen. That's confirmation. <laughs> we have Eli Canby from Tomahawks 4-H Club. Following Eli is Blake Puffenberger from Swan Ponds 4-H Club. Then we have Samuel Canby from Tomahawks 4-H Club. Then we have Lindsay Walls from Spring Mills FFA Chapter. Next is Spencer Byers from Mount Airy Winners 4-H Club. Then we have Cooper Knott from Scrabble Scramblers 4-H Club. And Macy Butler from Arden's 4-H Club. You'll notice all different sizes. Again, we're not going with the confirmation of the animals. We're looking at the abilities of the showman to present those animals in their best light.
We have some other activities going on at the fair today. The 10 o'clock, the poultry is being judged in the pens. 12 o'clock, you want to go check out the indoor exhibits right behind you as you are sitting there. There's lots of interesting projects over there. At 1 o'clock, you might want to check out, and I might want to check this out too, they're having poultry showing showmanship. I think we need to see how that's done. At 4 o'clock, you could ch um, check out the milking parlor. That's down to your far left all the way down. Um, a demonstration of how that's done. At 4 o'clock, also, the chicken barbecue will start being served. That will be on the front porch of the exhibit hall, and I believe they're going to put it in carryout. It's going to be a little different this year, but it will be guaranteed to be delicious. At 5 o'clock, the commercial exhibit's open. Also at 5 o'clock, we're going to have a pig calling contest. And that will be right here. If you haven't signed up for that, you could probably do that on the edge of the end of the barn. And I bet we've got some suey, suey, suey people that will be able to do that. At 5.30, we've got a pie eating contest. At 6 o'clock, the carnival opens. 6.30, we've got a kitty pedal pool, and that's down at the indoor arena. Tonight is the big entertainment. Morgan White will start performing at 6 o'clock on the track area. And then at 8 o'clock, John King will also perform on the track area. But just before you go see John King, you want to get a chance on the chip, cow chip bingo for Martinsburg's FFA chapter. That will happen right here in this arena at 8 o'clock at night you could be a big winner. So see a Martinsburg FFA chapter member for a cow chip chance. I've just been informed you could get your cow chip bingo tickets at the concession stand when you go get your egg and cheese and bacon sandwich. They are delicious. We're going to ask these two young ladies to my left to come back for your champion intermediate division. Initially, the young lady with the with the colored up heifer, I, wa I wasn't going to bring back because you didn't. A lot of times, you kind of got lost as, in terms of eye contact, but you got better as you went on. You, I mean, you've got a nice heifer that sets up nice for you. You do a lot of things right in terms of your positioning, but you didn't have any eye contact, and then you got better as it went on. Um, I appreciate how, how calm you are with your animal, but that, that'll help you. But you did better. I want to compliment you for that because I wasn't going to bring you back until you started making better eye contact. So nice job there. You did a lot of things right. You never lost eye contact, but you wasn't too heavy on the eye contact. You, kept, you made sure your steer was right too. Your positioning has been good. Your transitions in terms of when you go to walk your steer, how you change your hands, a lot of basic things you do right. As we move on to the young man who's sitting in the third hole, I think that you do a lot of things well. You know how your steer needs to look. 
there's some basic things that I think would help you in showmanship. Don't forget your left hand will have as much to do as your show stick in terms of moving the feet. He's really trying to get that foot to move, but your left hand was stationary. If you need that back foot to come up, pull a little bit forward on his head. Little minor things like that will help you in showmanship, but you do a lot of things right. Next young man, I just think that you're a little bit apprehensive in terms of feet placement. You had your steer set up a lot of times pretty good, especially on a profile, and then you didn't know, you wasn't sure whether you needed to move the feet or not. Just a little more awareness of how the feet need to be will help you. And always when you're standing still, you want to make sure that you always have the left hand on the halter until you go into motion, and that'll help you. Next young man with the red steer, I don't think you've got a lot of experience, but I think you have a lot of potential. I could, I could see you when you came in kind of looking around and gathering up, analyzing what was going on in the ring, and then you gathered yourself, you got your steer in line, you made good eye contact, and you got better the longer you showed, you got better. Some minor things that I'd change, for example, your show halter is right right now, but when you go to walk, I'd like to see you grab the tail of that show halter and with some slack, put it in your left hand with your show stick as you're walking your steer, that's close to the ground. You wouldn't want him to step on that halter and yank his head down or something minor like that could happen, but I really appreciated how tentative you was and, and like I said early on, you was kind of looking around, analyzing the situation and you got better. I want to commend you for that. Nice job. Next two, young man, I appreciate how well you're presented today. You've got your animals clean. Just need a little more experience in the ring. I'd specifically watch in this intermediate drive how the, the kids that come back handle their show stick and how they handle their, tra their transitions, specifically where they, how they handle their show stick when they're walking their animal. And once they park their animal, they, they, they constantly are keeping their animal calm with the show stick instead of just holding it at their side. And that'll help you. But if you watch them when they come back, that'll give you good insight on what will improve your showmanship skills. Please give him a round of applause. A nice class of showers. Placing first in this class, Lindsey Wall. Second, Macy Butler. Third, Cooper Knott. Fourth, Spencer Byers. Fifth, Blake Puffenberger. Sixth, Samuel Camby. And seven, Eli Camby. At this time, we're shown for intermediate champion, and we need to have Andrew Boer, number two. Then we have Reagan Barrett, 39. Follow that with Paige Knott. And then behind Paige will be our winners from the second class. And that is Lindsay. That's Lindsay Wall. And following Lindsay is Macy Butler. These are your top five intermediate showmen. And the winner of this division will receive a, a gift from Mid-Atlantic Farm Credit, a cash award from Farmers and Mechanics Insurance Company, as well as a cash award from the Golden Rule Farm, and that's Tammy Ware and her family. Our reserve champion will receive a gift from Mid-Atlantic Farm Credit, as well as a cash award from the Golden Rule Farm, Tammy Ware and her family. And third place will also receive an award from Tammy Ware, the Golden Rule Farm. So congratulations to all of those donors and a thank you to all of them. When we get finished with our intermediate showmen, we will have our first class of junior showmen. So Blaine Barges, Briar Moss, Chloe Burkhart, Chelsea Lewis, Reed Miller, and Leland Shoemaker should be bringing their animals to ringside. Just on a side um, note, doesn't Lindsay's, that's 31, doesn't Lindsay's steer look like Mickey Mouse with its big fluffy ears?
This is a real nice division of intermediate showmen. And please give them a round of applause. They're doing a nice job out here. I think that uh, they kind of separate themselves as you analyze them on the side profile a little bit to me. Um, I think that one thing, for example, the young lady with the chromed up steer, bigger steer, one thing you can always control is the spacing in front of you. So when you get when you get in a mess in spacing, and it, if it's between you and the one in front of you, it's your fault. It's like a, a car wreck. If somebody, if you rear end somebody, it's going to be your fault no matter what. You can't control what happens behind you, but for in the future, something that'll help help you in showmanship is to remember to always always be aware of that space between you and the one in front of you. You got yourself in a jam there a little bit, and now you're stuck between two smaller ones with without much space. So that'll help you. Um, the back leg could be set offset a little bit more and that's something minor the young lady on the on the far side I think your heifer is giving you a little bit little bit of trouble which puts you at a little bit of a disadvantage um, for example right now you got her against the rail if a judge wanted to get between there and look at it it'd be hard there a minute ago you had her stopped and made eye contact and put your stick on her but her feet could have been changed some a little more awareness of spacing and, and foot placement within this drive would help you I think the three to my right have have excelled in terms of spacing. I think they've they've been the the best at getting their animal the way it needs to be the quickest. Um, the young man to my right, he doesn't make many mistakes. I think that when he stops and, and decides to make eye contact, he's very aggressive to get his heifer where he needs to be and I appreciate that he knows what he needs to do. Once he does lock in, she, if you look like for right now, for example, he's got her head right, he's got her legs right, he's got his body position really well. I like how intense he is, but he's not overdoing it. Young lady with the red steer behind him, you do a lot of the same things. I think that you've had good spacing for the most part, pretty good feet placement, pretty good eye contact. I think that maybe sometimes you can get a little bit too rigid when you initially came in, a little bit too apprehensive in terms of your, just your body placement and the way you handle yourself with the steer. You're getting better the longer you're in here, but early on you looked a little bit He's a little bit tense and a little bit apprehensive and he didn't walk with your steer in a smooth fashion quite as well as what you are right now. I appreciate how you gathered yourself. Nice job of arm extension, staying away from your steer in a position that you can analyze him well. Nice job of eye contact. You're aware of how your steer needs to look. When you stop and make eye contact and put the stick on your steer, he's where he needs to be. Nice job with that. Young lady with the white steer, use it a little bit of disadvantage compared to the two in front of you because he's wanting to pull on you so much. A lot of times he's lugging and there's a few times you, you just kind of quit and went to set him up before you got him where you wanted him. You know, I'd, like to, I'd rather see you just wait and either let the ringman or the person behind you scoot him up for you before you start setting him up. For example, when you pulled in just a minute ago, you were still pulling on him and then trying to set him up at the same time. I'd rather see you get him right where you want him and then set him up. Those are minor, minor differences. I think that like we talked about in the senior drive, it comes down to a race. To me, I think whoever can get their animal in position the quickest and give the judge the least amount of bad views of their animal, for lack of better words, you know, it, it, the, the kid that does that the quickest is always at an advantage because the judge doesn't get a bad look at their animal or their showmanship skills. And from what I've analyzed in this limited window, I think we'll, we need to place them how they are, first, second, and third. Congratulations to each of you. Our intermediate showman is Andrew Boer. Reserve champion is Reagan Barrett. And placing third, Paige Knott. What a job well done by all exhibit. We'll take a few pictures and then we will have our junior show.
Our first section of junior showmen should be bringing their animals to ringside. While we're, sorry about that. While we're taking a few pictures, we might as well go over some more activities that's happening at the fair. Tomorrow is Horse and Dairy Day. And I would like to put a little plug in. During Dairy Day, we always have ice cream. So I'm thinking during Beef Days, how does kebab sell? Wouldn't that be good to have if we could find a sponsor? But anyway. Tomorrow, 8 o'clock is the horse show, and that is down at the horse arena. 9 o'clock is the dairy show right here in the arena. 12 o'clock, those exhibits are open again in the exhibit building. At 2 o'clock, we're having the Barnyard Olympics. You don't have to go to Tokyo to watch any Olympics tomorrow. You can c come right here for the Barnyard Olympics. At 5 o'clock, the commercial exhibits are open, and we encourage you to go down and see what free things there are. 5 o'clock is a watermelon eating contest. Sign up will be at the side barn. And we're going to have a corn shucking contest this year right here in the arena. That's at 5.30. At 6 o'clock is the carnival the carnival opening and at also six o'clock tomorrow is the round robin showmanship you want to come that's all of our champion showmans from everywhere 6 30 we've got the mini tractor pool and at eight o'clock we've got the parade of champions and at 8 30 we've got the utv sxf flat drags at the track arena that's thursday We need our first set of juniors in the ring. We're going to start with Blaine Barges. He is 72. And he is from the Hedgesville Superchargers 4-H Club. Then we have 257. That is Briar Moss from Swan Ponds 4-H Club. 163 is Chloe Burkhart, and she's from Valley Stars 4 H Club. 266 is Chelsea Lewis from Valley Stars 4 H Club. Then we have 40 Reed Miller from Valley Stars 4 H Club. And then we have Leland Shoemaker from Swan Ponds 4-H Club. These are our junior showmen and these guys are nine years old or in the third grade up to that time, nine to 11. So these are our youngest, these are our future that we are looking at.
This class, of, first class of junior showmen, we're going to bring the three individuals and in, the first three in line back to choose a champion intermediate here in just a minute. Young man coming out now didn't just didn't make very many mistakes. I like I like his eye contact. Again, you'll get tired of hearing me say it, but in showmanship, I love the balance of eye contact and having your animal set up quickly, but not ignoring him. The really good balance of that, being aware of your animal and eye contact, and good positioning. Next two young ladies, they did a nice job of being a, being aware of what's going on. I'd like to tweak them maybe a little bit in terms of foot placement, but it wasn't far enough off to keep you from coming back. Nice job of eye contact. Nice job of being aware. Really good job of getting them set up quick, although I'd tweak the foot placement ever so slightly. But other than that, really nice job. A good balance, again, of eye contact and being aware of how your animals need to be. Next young man just needs a little more time. When, you, when you're stopped, for example, on the rail and go to set, set your heifer up, make sure your left hand is holding her so your right hand can be using the stick to set it up or rubbing her belly. Always keep, her, always keep that holder in your right hand when you're walking her. But when you stop to set her up, you want to make sure you're holding her head with your left hand. That'll help you. Nice job of eye contact. The next young man just kind of get needs a couple basics, and you're going to do a lot better. For example, a little spacing with extend yourself away from your animal just a little bit. There you go. Now you can see them feed a little better when you're, walk, when you're walking your calf. Keep, get a little bit of space. They won't be stepping on your heels or anything like that. Just little basic things that you'll see these kids coming back do. If you kind of watch them, it'll help you in terms of how they're holding their stick. Spacing, they're not getting over against the rail or caught up in the corner. But you cover your bases a lot really well with eye contact and, and being tentative out here. I appreciate that. Next young man, you just need your steer cooperating a little better. And just some, some basics. You want to hold that halter with the left hand when you're standing still. You got to be aware of your halter. You got it tangled up in your show stick a little bit. Just a little more time and, and being aware. Watch these kids that win the the intermediate division, the intermediate division here in a minute. Watch where they put their hands and how they handle their stick, and it'll really help you in the future. And get your steer walking a little better will help. But sometimes they're just stubborn, and I understand that. Please give him another round of applause. A nice class to begin with. Placing first in this class, Briar Moss. Placing second is Chloe Burkhart. Placing third is Chelsea Lewis. Fourth, Leland Shoemaker. Fifth, Blaine Barges. And sixth, Reed Miller. And our first three will come back for overall showmen. Look at these cute little fellas. We've got Brian Van Dyne from Swan Ponds 4-H Club. Now he's a little bigger. Next we have Nicholas Byers from Mount Airy Winners 4-H Club. Followed by Grant Bolliard from Appalachian Clovers 4-H Club. Then we have Mark Hunter from Swan Ponds 4-H Club. And finishing out the class is Colton Seibert from the Scrabble Scramblers 4-H Club. This is our last class of juniors. And when we are finished with this, we will determine an overall junior champion. If you've missed the earlier, just arrived, our judge today is John Bob Spiker. He's a graduate of WVU, and he has a degree in agriculture, business, and economics. He's from the state of West Virginia. He has a farm in Jane Lou, and he manages a herd of Angus cattle and a flock of commercial ewes on his farm with his wife and their daughters. But really what's most important about John Bob is he spent time working with the kids and that is his greatest asset. So thank you John Bob for spending time with our kids and doing a great job today. Thank you.
We're going to bring the two young men, men to my left back for your champion junior drive here in a minute. And please give them a round of applause for winning this class. They've done a nice job. <laughs> Initially, I wasn't going to bring the young man back with the orange colored, orange appearing steer. He just didn't get him gathered up real quick. But what, the, what I appreciated about the, what he did was when he did stop, specifically on the profile, when he stopped and put a stick on the, the steer and made eye contact, he really had him right. He had the feet right. He, had, he placed his body better at that point than he had any other time within this drive, and he made good eye contact. That really sold it for me. Young man in the, that what's standing in the second hole now, which they're not necessarily placed, but I thought he's had probably been the quickest to get on point within this drive in terms of stopping and getting, getting your heifer set up right the quickest. There's a few minor things I'd change, maybe create a little more extension between you and her throughout the show, whether it's standing still or when you're moving her, but you've done a nice job of getting her where she needs to be quick and maintaining good eye contact. The next three young men, there's not not really any placings here. We just brought you in. I think that, that the two that won this class were a little quicker to get them where they needed to be. For example, the young man with the brockle, brockle heifer, when you set on the profile, you had really good eye contact when you pulled her in and stopped her and you was just a little bit too heavy on that. You Make sure you get her set up quick before you really lock in on the judge and make good eye contact to put your stick on her. I would have focused more on getting her set up first rather than having real good eye contact first, and that'll help you in showmanship, being a little more prompt from that standpoint. Next young man, I appreciate your calm demeanor out here. I think you could do anything with your steer. There's a few basics I'd change, and, and one of them is your spacing between you and the head of your animal. Just create a little more space, and again, like we talked earlier, it'll help you analyze your animal and just navigate around the steer to where you're in a position never to inhibit the judge's view of your animal. So just extend your arm a little bit, whether you're standing still or in motion, and that'll help you some from a showmanship standpoint. You did a lot of things right in this class, though, and the young man on the end, again, there's not a lot of separation. Maybe get a little laxed with the head. I'd like to see the head up on a more regular basis on this animal and always something that will help you with showmanship because you've got a lot of potential. Great eye contact. You do a lot of things right. You set her up good for the most part throughout this drive. But before you come in the ring, you really want to know the, how, how everybody is going in the ring. You, shouldn't, you, shouldn't, you don't want to have to ask where to go. So in the future when you're showing, watch those classes ahead of you if you can and see where they go in the ring. That way you don't have to have any question where to go, and that will help you. But you've got a lot of potential. You did a lot of things right too. Please give another round of applause for a nice class. Job well done. Placing first in the class was Mark Hunter. Placing second, Grant Bolliard. And placing in a tie for third, we have Colton Seibert, Nicholas Byers, and Brian Van Dyne. We're going to show for our junior showman, grand champion, and we need to have, and he's right there, 257, Briar Moss, Chloe Burkhart, Follow that by Chelsea Lewis. And our last entry is Mark Hunter. And we have Grant Boyard. Our winner of this class will receive a gift from Jeff and Shelley Shoppert. A cash award from MVB Bank. A cash award also from Windy Rock Farm. That's George and Brenda Miller. Our reserve champion will receive a gift from Jeff and Shelley Shoppert. And a cash award from Windy Rock Farms. And our third place individual will receive a cash award from Windy Rock Farms. When we, get, when we have determined a junior champion, we will show for grand champion showman, and we will need to have our senior champion return to the ring, that's Taylor Barrett. Our intermediate champion will return to the ring, and that is Andrew Bohr, and our junior champion will stay in the ring to determine our grand champion beef showman.
When we get finished with our um, junior champion, of course, we'll do pictures, and then we'll have our overall showman, and then we're going to start our main Anjou show, and that is the Jenkins girls heifers, junior yearling heifers, so they should be putting the final touches on their ring. Another nice class to choose from for your junior champion showman. Please, please give each of these kids a round of applause. A really nice class to analyze. I think as a whole, they've done a great job having good eye contact and getting their animals set up. There could be a few tweaks in terms of spacing. For example, young lady with your steer, you always want to be aware of where he's at. If he's kind of out of line, go ahead and correct that. But with that said, I think that we've seen a lot of pretty smiles out here. But you, might, you might have the award on that. So if we, if we had a ribbon for that, I'd give it to you. You have a beautiful smile. But that's something that we need to correct it in showmanship terms in the future is, is get them in line, be able to recognize that. But aside from that, you've done a nice job. Next young lady, you've got her set up really nice right now. Took you a little bit, little, little bit longer to get there than some of your counterparts, but you've done a lot of nice things. I'd like to see you create a little bit of space between you and her head. For example, just take a step back at an angle a little bit, and again, that'll allow you to analyze her foot placement better. It'll allow you to maneuver around and not obstruct the judge's view any, and that'll help you in the future. Next young man, I think one thing you really need to pay attention to is your spacing between you and the one in front of you. When you initially came in on the profile, you got a steer that's wanting to bully you a little bit ever so slightly and push you around leave that extra space to be prepared for that you got right up on her initially but I appreciate how you gathered him up and what I really appreciate about the way you show is when you do stop and lock in and make eye contact you sure for the most part have him right um, you're kind of proving me a liar now because his front left is wrong but throughout the show he's been really set up nice when you decide to make eye contact and put your stick on him Next young man, again, you do a lot of things right. You've got, you've got your animal stretched a little bit too much right now. I'd just like to see you create a little bit more space between you and your animal. Again, like we talked about with the young lady that's in the middle, that'll allow you to, to step back and analyze the feet placement a little better. It'll allow you to maneuver yourself to where you don't obstruct the judge's view in a smoother, quicker fashion. But I really appreciate your promptness and your eye contact. Kind of like we were talking about a second go with the orange steer. That's probably the worst you've had her set up in the showmanship because you've done a really good job getting her feet right you've got her spread out a little bit on the front now but that's just trying to give you some constructive criticism you're doing a really good job as well as everybody in this drive to me it's pretty pretty easy I think if you look at the young man to my far right he just hasn't allowed me to get a bad look at his animal I think every time that I've looked up he's had he's had his his calf set up right the legs are pretty much straight down in the front He's got his back leg offset. He's in a good position. He's got good eye contact. He's stayed calm and methodical as he's shown throughout this drive. And you'll be our champion junior showman. Congratulations. <laughs> it gets really tough on the next two. 
for me. I'm told I need to choose three. I could make a case for any of these juniors to be second and third. I'm going to go pick them in order, second and third, the way I see them, and, and congratulate each of you. Please give the remaining contestants a round of applause, and I'll pick your second and third. Our grand champion junior showman is Briar Moss. Our reserve, our reserve champion, Mark Hunter. And placing third, Grant Bolliard. Job well done by everyone. When we get our finished pictures finished, we'll show for overall champion, and we will need to have our senior champion. Our, our senior champion is Taylor Barrett. Our intermediate champion is Andrew Bohr, and our junior champion is Briar Moss. They will be competing for overall champion. And then it's on to the breeding show, and that's your main Anjou is first, and that's the Jenkins girls. Helping present ribbons today is Miss Carolyn Cook, who is Miss Youth Fair. So thank you for your time and effort.
We're, we're showing for our grand champion showman of the beef section. And our, we have three entries in this class. We have our senior champion, Taylor Barrett, with the big red steer. We have Andrew Boer with the little calf. And we have Briar Moss with a steer. Our grand champion showman will receive a rotating plaque from Berkeley County Farm Bureau, a banner from M&M Simitals, that's the Jim Moore family, and they will also have the opportunity to participate in the Round Robin Showmanship class, which is on Thursday evening. This is one of the more prestigious honors that we strive for. Showmanship is all about the work that we've put into a project, and it reflects the individuals. So job well done for all three of these folks, as well as everyone else who has participated in the showmanship class. I think when you analyze these, these individuals that come out of their respective divisions, it's really easy to see why they're out here showing for, I guess, the overall champion showman. I mean, there's a, just so many things these, these three individuals do right. They, they, they each show in a professional manner. They show with their animal. When they get their animals in motion, they're walking with them. You don't see them tugging or you don't see the animals getting away from them. Wonderful balance of eye contact, but still being aware of their, their animal. They can feel, if you watch them, they know they might be locked in with eye contact, but they can tell from the, the a shift of weight from a feeling in their left hand, they know when to check back with their animal. And it might be subconscious, but they're doing that. They know when to check their animal, and they don't ignore that balance. And that's, I hope some of, the, some of the other juniors and seniors and intermediates are, are watching these three, because there's a lot to be learned here. Love the spacing. Each of them leave enough space between them and the one in front of them to where if they need to reset their animal or maneuver their animal, they can do it in a smooth fashion without running into anybody. I like their positionings. They're, they're leaving enough space between them and the animal to where they, again, can step back, analyze the feet placement. They can maneuver in a fashion that doesn't allow them to obstruct the judge's view of their animal. And you got to remember, it's, it's essentially all about the animal, but they're doing a good job presenting their animal, I feel, the best way that anybody could with the ones they're showing. Um, it's really hard because, again, they're doing so many things right. They're, they're positioning, their transitions, they're, the way they're getting on point with their animal, they all three tend to know how their animal needs to look. Some have an advantage that maybe they've got a little better animal to show that's cooperating a little better, but it'd be a minor difference. Um, I just want to, I've got to pick one and I hate to have to do that because I could probably make a case for each of these. 
I think one's been a little bit, a little bit more prompt, a little bit more aggressive in a smooth fashion, maybe a little bit more confident without being cocky and having a good balance of that. And I'm going to choose that individual, but I really want to congratulate each of you because I think that all three of you are outstanding showers. Please give them a round of applause. Congratulations, Taylor Barrett. And a job well done by Andrew and Breyer. After our pictures, we're going to start with the breeding stock, which provides the basis for all of the steers that will be coming up. And we're going to start with our main Anjou class first. Good morning, everyone here on WRNR TV and WRNR on YouTube. It is the beef show currently going on here at the Berkeley County Youth Fair inside of the indoor arena. It's been going on since 8 o'clock. Let's join in progress right now. It's just concluded one round, and here after pictures, they will go back into the competition. Entries in our junior yearling heifer class. These are heifers that are born January 1st of 2020 to June 30th of also 2020. We have Savannah Jenkins and Brianna Jenkins of the Maine Anjou Show.
The next show on tap is the All Others Breed, and that is Andrew Bohr, Ella Collis, and Paige Knott with the Shorthorns, the Hereford, the Angus. We have two entries in this class. Brianna Jenkins is first and leading uh, her heifer. And Savannah Jenkins, number 44, is uh, following her sister. And those both are from the Scrabble Scramblers 4 H Club. We will be determining a grand reserve from this class also. It's a nice pair of main heifers to analyze for our first division of the heifer show. I think the heifer that wins this class just excels specifically on a profile when you analyze her capacity and depth of body and how deep she is as she transitions from her fore flank to hind flank. When you, and when you set her into motion, you, you have to appreciate that she tends to want to put them down right where she picks them up. I like how she gets around the ring. Just a lot of nice pieces, this heifer. Really level hip, wider to pin set, but still gives you a feminine look. Our second place heifer, obviously the larger framed heifer in the class. I'd just like to give her a little more depth of body and capacity to go along with that frame to get any higher in this class. Congratulations to each of you. Our grand champion, Maine Anjou, is exhibited by Brianna Jenkins, and our reserve champion exhibited by Savannah Jenkins. After pictures, we'll need to have Andrew Boer's Angus Senior Calf brought to ringside.
while we're waiting, let's go over Friday's activities at the fair. At 10 8, from 8 to 10, all of you that have exhibited animals that are non-market animals, you can take them home. And also from 8 to 10, you can take your indoor exhibits home. 1 o'clock, we'll start setting up for the livestock auction, and many of the animals you'll see today will be available for sale on Friday. At 5 o'clock, the commercial exhibits open, as well as the celebrity milking contest will take place here in the indoor arena. At 5.30, we've got um, the livestock buyer's reception, and that will take place in the indoor exhibit hall, and the carnival, of course. And then the big event on Friday night is the livestock sale, which happens right here in this arena. And our sale order this year is goats, steers, hogs, and lambs. So if you need something for your freezer, what a great opportunity to give back to the community and to a 4-H or an FFA member by buying one of their animals. Also on Friday night, you've got a demolition derby. After you've spent your money at the auction, you can go down and watch the demolition derby on the track. Those are Friday's activities. We have one entry in our all other breeds class for our senior heifer, and that is Andrew Boer from Tomahawks 4 H Club. This is Andrew Boer from Tomahawks 4-H Club. We've seen this pair a few other times today and still doing a great job. After this class, we need to have our junior yearlings, he heifers, brought to the ring. That's Andrew Boer, Ella Collis, and Paige Knott. Andrew has a heifer. This heifer was born July 1st, 2020 until December 31st of 2020. We've got a really nice single entry fall born up. We've seen this young man out here two or three times already and, and whether a judge wants to admit it or not, he, he looks at the animals in showmanship because that's what they're presenting. So he's able to look at her there and I, something that really sticks out in my mind watching her is, is when you set this heifer up on the profile, just the exceptional amount of capacity that she has for her age. She's super, super deep bodied, super deep flanked on the profile, and, and you really have to admire how her spine holds it a lot of times when they get that much capacity. There's some give and take, whether it's in the center of their spine or going into their shoulder, but she holds it together really well. Her chest floor sets nice compared to her hind flank, and, and she's nice and clean coming up out of her chest floor and has some extension from the front part of her scapula. Again, a really nice single entry that could sure stand some competition. Please give him a round of applause for bringing a nice heifer in. Receiving a blue ribbon is Andrew Boer. Andrew's going to change calves. Don't take her too far, Andrew, because you'll need her in a couple minutes for the overall champion. We have three entries in our junior yearling heifer class. Andrew's going to change animals, and he's going to bring a Hereford in this time. These junior yearlings were born January 1st of 2020 until June 30th of last year. Andrew Bohr has a Hereford from Tomahawks 4-H Club. Next we have Ella Collis with a short horn from Valley Star 4-H Club. And we follow that with Paige Knott from Scrabble Cat, 
Scramblers 4-H Club with a Simitol solution. Sim solution. These, this category is in all other breeds. Because there was only one entry in their particular breed, they're all showing in this particular category. Our crossbred show is coming up, so it won't be long before we need the junior calves crossbreeds from Taylor Barrett, Macy Butler, Taylor Horn, Ashton Lazarus, Chelsea Lewis, Seth Painter, and Reese Barrett. You usually don't have Simmentals, Herefords, and Shorthorns in an AOB division because those are pretty popular breeds, and you usually get to analyze them within their within their breeds. So this is challenging because each each is specifically these three breeds bring something different to the table. So you've got different types and kinds. I think each of these heifers represent their breed well. We're going to begin with the Hereford female to win this AOB AOB division. I think that she just excels from an overall capacity standpoint. She just has so much internal dimension to her, and I really like how long-bodied she is. She seems to move pretty fluent. She really reaches with that one, one front foot when you set her into motion. I realize she runs downhill just a shade. She's got a little, she gets a little excessive in her chest floor in terms of waist, but sometimes with those purebred Herefords, it's a little more acceptable. You see them a little deeper chested, but I really appreciate how long coupled she is, and again, just the overall capacity and how well she carries it. Our, our second place heifer within this division is easily the, the most feminine heifer. I love how fresh she is for her age. I love how level spine she is. Beautiful coming out of her front one third. Just a little more frail in her bone makeup. Doesn't quite have the internal dimension of the Hereford that wins this division. And if I could change her ever so slightly, maybe set her tail head down just, just a little bit. But boy, I appreciate how fresh and feminine this heifer is and really super nice lines when you look at her on the side profile. The short horn is coming into third. I, I appreciate the length that this heifer has. She's got 
really nice circumference of bone. I like the angle to her scapula. Just that when you set her into motion, just doesn't set those hind pasterns down quite as smoothly as the two in front of her. Doesn't quite have the internal dimension as the two heifers in front of her or the depth of flank, but really an attractive female in her own right. Please give him a round of applause for a nice trio of heifers. Okay, we need Andrew Burr's Angus Senior Heifer Calf, and we, we need Andrew Burr's Herford to show for Grand Champion AOB. And it's always great to see other 4-H'ers step up to the plate 4-H'ers and FFA members step up the plate, so thank you, Reagan, for helping out. We are showing for Grand and Reserve Champion all other breeds. We'll have a few pictures, and then we'll start our crossbred show. Two, these are two nice females to choose from for your champion AOB. We have the Angus to my right and the Hereford behind her. I think both of these heifers seem to get around the ring and, and be fluent in their movement and just have so many nice traits about them. I love the capacity that each of these heifers have. The Angus heifer, she just excels in the center portion of her gauge as you analyze her back into her hind flank. And when you look at her at a three-quarter view, just a really nice angle to her scapula. She just so elegant and pretty up through that front one-third. I think she has a slight advantage over a Hereford female. Although she's older, I think she has an advantage coming out of her chest floor. <clears throat> just, excuse me, just a little cleaner made up to her throat latch. Just a little, little neater in her design, maybe a slightly stronger in her heart. But those are the differences I see in these two females. Each of them represent their breed really well and I think would be competitive within their breed. But for those reasons, I would use your Angus as your champion. And since there wasn't a reserve in that division, we're going to use the Hereford as your reserve. Congratulations to each of you. Those are two really nice females. Our grand champion, all other breeds, is exhibited by Andrew Bohr as well as the reserve champion exhibited by Andrew Bohr. As soon as we get some pictures taken, we need to have our cross, uh, our junior heifer calves from the crossbreed show, crossbred show, brought to ringside.
We'd like to thank everybody that's helping in the barn get the, ca the cows and the kids to the arena on time. Thank you very much. We're ready now for our crossbred class of junior heifer calves. These are heifer calves that were born on or after January 1st of this year. And we have quite a few exhibitors in this class. Our first exhibitor is the judge. So Taylor, if you want to bring her on in. We have Taylor Barrett from the Scrabble Scramblers 4-H Club. We have Marcy Butler from Arden 4-H Club. Then we have Taylor Horn from Hedgesville's FFA chapter. Also from Hedgesville's FFA chapter is Ashton Lazaric. We have Chelsea Show, Chelsea Lewis from Valley Star 4-H Club. I don't know where that came from, Chelsea, I'm sorry. We have Seth Painter from the Wetumpka 4-H Club, and we have Reese Barrett from Spring Mills 4-H Club. This is your class.
I think we kind of have an outlier in this class, this heifer that wins this, this division. I think she's got an advantage just from show ring eye appeal and her collar and a nice hair coat. With that said, you have to appreciate her makeup underneath of it. Beautiful out of her front one third, really extended from her scapula forward, clean made, a nice angle to her shoulder. As you, as you transition back, she fills in nice in her heart girth. She's adequate in her capacity, and she's got some turn to her top when you analyze her back on from there. She's got some muscle shape, but she has it in a feminine fashion. She can carry it around the ring with some, with some flexibility, and she's soft, and she's developed in her pelvic area. Just a really nice combination of form and function. That's a nice female. Our second place female, completely different in type and kind and show ring eye appeal, but this is a really nice one. Granted, this effort probably has an advantage compared to her frame and the amount of capacity she has. I think that she is better in that aspect than the heifer that wins this class, but I think she's a, just a little quicker in her overall makeup, a little more refined in her skull makeup. With that said, I love for her frame how her capacity balances out with it, and she still has some muscle shape but in a feminine look. A lot of nice pieces this heifer just gives up a little bit in terms of bone work and overall growth compared to the heifer that wins this class. But two really nice females in different packages, but two really nice females to begin this class with. I think that our third place heifer resembles our second place heifers really close. Uh, she has a lot of the same quality. She's got some muscle to her. She's nice on the profile. Just a little more narrow based. Not quite the, she's not quite as open in the center gauge as a heifer that's in second in this class, but she's very comparable. The gray heifer, I think what puts her in third, I realize she's a little skinny in her heart girth and maybe not as much turn to her top as a couple below her, but I really appreciate her spring of rib and her capacity on the side profile. Just a little green in her overall makeup and design, and I can say that the same for the the next two heifers, just next three heifers, just a little greener, the two black heifers, they're comparable to our second and third place heifer, but they're just a little more raw in their overall design compared to their frame, not the capacity that the gray heifer has. But these are three that just need a little more time. They're all flexible and have some positive attributes. Please give each of them a round of applause. That's a nice class of heifers to analyze. Okay, placing first in this class is Macy Butler with a blue ribbon, and she'll be back later for our champions class. Placing second was Ashton Lazaric, also with a blue ribbon, and she's on deck just in case. Chelsea Lewis is third with a blue ribbon. Placing fourth with a red ribbon was Taylor Barrett. Fifth with a red ribbon was Reese Barrett. Sixth also with a red ribbon was Seth Painter, and seventh was Taylor Horn with a white ribbon, but she had the best bedazzled ear tag in the ring. We have one entry in our senior heifer calf class. This is Colton Seibert from Scrabble Scramblers 4-H Club. And our next class is our junior yearlings. Young man brings us a nice single entry here. I really like how long-bodied this brockle-faced heifer is, and she's she's sound when the young man walks her around the ring, and one that could stand some competition. Thank you for bringing out the single entry. Please give him a round of applause. Placey first receiving a blue ribbon is Colton Seibert from Scrabble Scramblers 4-H Club. We now need our junior yearling heifers in the ring. These are heifers that were born January 1st of 2020 through June 30th of 2020. We have five entries in this class, starting with Grant Bolliard from the Appalachian Clovers 4-H Club. 
Then we need Savannah Jenkins from the Scrabble Scramblers 4-H Club. Then we have Paige Knott from the Scrabble Scramblers 4-H Club. Follow that by Leland Shoemaker from Swan Ponds 4-H Club. And then we have Brian Van Dyne from Swan Ponds 4-H Club. After we have the placings for this class, we'll show for Grand and Reserve Champion of the Crossbred Shows. And that will mean that we need to have Macy Butler's Junior Heifer Calf and Colton Seibert's Senior Heifer Calf brought to ringside as soon as we have a winner for this class.
it's a nice class of females. It, there's a lot of inconsistencies out here, and I think you just got to kind of go with what what fits the bill, the most complete heifer in the class. I think that uh, initially this gray heifer gives you a little bit of a terminal look. Maybe she wants to get a little high on her crest and just get a give you a markety look. But when you start breaking her down, she is extended through her front one third. She does have a lot of capacity. I appreciate that about her. She has some, some really nice quality in terms of her springer rib and, and she lays in the top part of her shoulder real well coming out of her spine into her heart girth. Um, just a lot of nice qualities about her. I realize she gets outside of herself a little bit when you set her into motion, but really from a from a cow standpoint, I love her capacity. I love how she's holding everything together, and she's one you could probably go either way with from a breeding standpoint. Our second place heifer, I'll be the first to admit, there's too much condition on this heifer. Way too much for me And, and when you look at her brisket and the amount of cover that she has around her pin bone. With that said, I like her skeletal makeup compared to the three below her. She's level spined. I think underneath of that condition, she's got a good angle to her shoulder. She's level from hooks to pins, and she is very deep bodied. Just way too much condition on her, especially in her chest floor to get any higher in this class. As we move on to our third place heifer, I really appreciate how fresh she is compared to our second place heifer. Where I'd like to change her is, is her hip makeup. She's a little bit low in her pin set from hooks to pins. When you get her on a profile, she's a little bit high in her flank compared to the two heifers that win the class, but she's really nice through her front one third. A good angle to her shoulder, extended from her up from her neck going into her head, and she moves around the ring with a relative amount of flexibility. I appreciate that. The white heifer coming next very comparable. Again, she's fresher in her makeup than our second place heifer, but where I'd change her some is probably in her heart girth. She sticks out a little bit at the point of her shoulder. Just make her a little neater in that area. When you look at her from the side profile, she might want to be a little bit high in her flank. Some of that could be the young man showing her just that didn't keep her head up maybe as high as it should have been initially, but if I could change her in her heart girth and, and make her not protrude so much at the point of her shoulder, she gets higher in this class. She gets a little bit soft on her pastures too, and that, that inhibits her a little bit from getting a, to getting any higher in this class. And then the young man with the ear tag 43 heifer just gets outperformed in this class, just a little bit of a disadvantage from a conditioning and age standpoint, but she does have really nice lines to her when you look at her spine, and she can walk around the ring nice. Please give him a round of applause. A really fun class to analyze. Placing first in this class with a blue ribbon is Paige Knott. Second with a red ribbon, Grant Bolliard. Third with a red ribbon, Savannah Jenkins. Fourth with a red ribbon, Leland Shoemaker. And fifth with a white ribbon, Brian Van Dyne. We now need to show for our grand champion crossbred. We need to have the junior heifer calf by make, um, Macy Butler. We need the senior heifer calf by Colton Seibert. And we need our junior yearling heifer Paige Knott to ringside.
once we have our grand champion crossbred and reserve champion, we'll show for overall female of the show. And we'll need to have Brianna Jenkins, Maine Anjou, Andrew Boers, Hereford, no, his Angus, and the winner of this class. It's a nice class of champion lineup for your crossbred division. Uh, the, the painted up heifer here to my right, uh, within her class, you really had to appreciate how she stuck out from just a show ring eye appeal standpoint. Of course, she has a beautiful hair coat and you love her collar, but set that aside, I like her makeup. I like how level spine she is. I like how elegant she is up through her front one third. She's adequate in her capacity, a little bit gant today. I think if that one, as you get her out more and you're able to fill her up better at a show and she adapts better and eats better, I think when you expand her center a little bit, she's even harder to get around. What I really appreciate about her is when you set her into motion, she seems to be fluent on every joint. She just is natural as you, as, you, as you walk her. And when you get behind her, you like that she's got some muscle. She's got some top to her, but she, she holds it in an elegant fashion. Really nice female. I appreciate all that about her. And again, the young lady does a nice job with her, really calm in her demeanor. And the heifer kind of feeds off that and always looks relaxed and, and in place. Next young man's heifer, like in, he was a single entry, and like in that class, I appreciate how long-bodied she is. She's sound. She gets a little bit low at her pin set when you look at her from the side profile. Maybe not the depth of flank or circumference of bone as the heifer's on each end of her, but a nice heifer in her own right. And then we have the Smokey that won the last class. This is one that you just really have to appreciate the depth of body she has. There's a lot of internal dimension on this heifer. My initial take on her is she gets she gives you a slight terminal look. I think that in a market heifer show, that one there would be pretty competitive. When you set her into motion, she's not as fluent as the heifer to our far right when you in terms of the way she moves, specifically on her back too. She tends to want to get outside of herself a little bit in her stride and maybe not quite as soft on those pasterns. With that said, that's one that you could again go both ways with. You might want to breed her for a club calf or breed her for a terminal for terminal offspring or if you bred her the right way, you could go two different directions if you wanted to, for lack of better words. But to me, the most complete heifer in this drive is a young lady's heifer on the far end. Congratulations, you'll be champion crossbred. We need... The second place calf in the junior heifer calf, and that is exhibited by Ashton Lazaret. Congratulations, Macy. To bring the second in that class out from our champion, this is a heifer that, that doesn't get, have the pizzazz, maybe not the muscle and the, and the power that our gray heifer has, and maybe not the, well, she doesn't have the hair coat or the show ring eye appeals and one that wins it, but when you, when you look at all of her pieces for what she is, that's a, for her age, an awful well-made female. You look at her from the side, she balances out really nice from fore flank to hind flank. She's got a good, good spring of ribs. She's extended through her front one third. And I think what gives her an advantage within this drive is just her maternal traits. She just moves in a smoother fashion. She's more natural in her stride. She's elegant, and I think that one is a better cow prospect. She's going to be your reserve champion. Congratulations. Congratulations, Aston Lazaric, as your reserve champion crossbred. We'll take some pictures. And then we'll show for grand champion female of the show.
It's now time for Grand Champion Female of the Show. We have three entries in this class. We've got the uh, Grand Champion Maine Au Jus. That sounds like a sauce, doesn't it? That's uh, Brianna Jenkins. We have the Grand Champion All Other Breeds, which is uh, Andrew Boers Angus. And we have Macy Butler's Crossbred. After we have this winner and take a few pictures, we'll start the feeder calf class. And that is Peyton Dugan, Seth Painter, and Taylor Barrett. Our grand champion female of the show will receive a cash award by Eminem Simitals, and that's the Jim Moore family. We have a banner given by Harry and Dorothy Snow. We have reserve champion will receive a cash award by Windy Rock Farm, that's George and Brenda Miller. And we have a banner given by the Knott family, that's Shepherdstown Pharmacy, with an extension in Spring Mills. If you would, please give these exhibitors a round of applause. A nice set of females to choose from for Supreme. I, I think each of these heifers represent the divisions they came out of really well. For example, the main, you, you, when you get behind her, you really appreciate how wide her pin set is. She's got a level, wide hip on her. She's got a little bit bigger foot on her. And she just kind of represents that division well. I like she's adequate in her capacity and her length of body and, and the turn to her top and a lot of nice parts for her. As we move on to the heifer that won the AOB, which is your, no, your Angus heifer. I guess she was in the AOB, but your Angus female, this, this heifer just excels in capacity, and I guess it, it's where you want to put your emphasis when you're analyzing these, these final drives. Um, you have to admire that. She moves around the ring pretty well, I think, and just a lot of nice pieces. Just She has that, that really sought-after combination of a huge gauge, a lot of spring of rib, but it goes into an attractive front one third, and that's what makes a makes one a, a little more valuable, especially within this realm. You really appreciate that about her. And the and again, the heifer that we just talked about a little bit ago. I love the way this heifer moves. Probably the most fluent in the ring that we've seen today. And and obviously beautiful collar. She's presented well, but when you break her down beyond that, you like her her phenotypical makeup. I like the angle to her shoulder. I like again her flexibility. I like her extension up through her front one third. I like that she's got some thickness, she's got some top to her, but she has it, she holds it together in an elegant fashion. I would like to see her opened up a little bit in her center gauge from a future cow standpoint, but again, like we said in that division, as a young lady gets her out and shows her more and she adapts to the road more and she'll, she'll eat better on the road and then she's gonna make it even harder on her contemporaries that she shows against. 
I look at a, a supreme division like this. I, I, I was working on a steer last night for a family in Pennsylvania, and they're wondering what the judge is going to do, and it, it just boils down to what where he wants to put his emphasis, what he wants to put the most value on. And I think when you're judging females, and, and a lot of people think that the show ring is really different from the real world. In a lot of ways, real world commercial cattle, in a lot of ways it is, but one thing that always holds true is they've got to be sound. Whether they're shown in the show ring or they're out in the feedlot, they need to be flexible and sound. From a female standpoint, whether you're showing them or you have a commercial herd with no intentions of showing, they need to have some capacity for the feed conversion and, and just for several reasons. So I think these three have all of that. They're adequate in the amount of rib shape they have. They seem to navigate around the ring well. Their overall phenotypical makeup has the right angles and the right extensions where it needs to be. There's one that excels to me from, from a couple things that I put an awful lot of emphasis on when I'm looking at a female or whether it's commercial or show, and that's capacity and flexibility, and that's going to be the heifer in the center. She'll be your supreme champion. Congratulations, young man. Congratulations, Andrew Bohr. And if we have Andrews Hereford to ringside. As we look at your reserve within that division to analyze for Reserve Supreme, this is a heifer. This is the third time we've seen her, and, and so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on her, but I really want to compliment the young man for bringing a, a Hereford female that is, I think will always be competitive within that breed. I love the center portion to her gauge. She's really expanded in, in the center portion of her rib. I like how level hip she is. Maybe not quite as attractive through that one, front one-third as I'd like to see. She tends to want to run downhill just to shave, but that's getting really picky on a good one. To me, the next, the next most fault-free female within this drive to choose from is your chromed-up female. She'll be your reserve supreme. Congratulations. Our reserve champion female is exhibited by Macy Butler. Congratulations to all the exhibitors in the breeding classes. As soon as we get some pictures, we're going to start with our feeder calf classes.
for ready for our feeder calves. If we could have Peyton Dugan, Seth Painter, and Taylor Barrett into the ring. After we've finished the feeder calf classes, we're going to take a 10 minute break before we can start the steer class. Oh. I was hoping it'd be 1 o'clock, we'd see cold drinks, showmanship. No? Will we be done by 1 o'clock? <laughs> Our three entries in this class from your far right is Peyton Dugan of Spring Mills FFA chapter. Then we have Seth Painter from Wetumpka's 4-H Club and Taylor Barrett from the Scrabble Scramblers 4-H Club. This is a nice class to begin our feeder steer show with. I, re I realize this mousy colored steer gives up some size and, and probably weight, weight per day of age. I didn't ask the ages on these, these steers, but this is the most complete steer in the class. He's adequate in the amount of capacity that he has compared to his frame size. When you get behind him, he's got some true muscle to him. He doesn't have any of the extras in terms of bone and, and extra hair or anything. It kind of is what it is, but for his frame, it's on a nice makeup in terms of the amount of capacity and muscle that he has. He moves around the ring just fine on all four wheels, and that's probably what gives him an advantage over the shorthorn appearing steer. This is a steer that I realize has more size and capacity to him, really good in the center portion of his rib in terms of spring of rib and depth of body. With that said, he gets a little refined in his heart girth when you get behind him and watch him move away from you. He has some base width, but he really likes to hawk in just a shade. I think our steer that wins a class just has an advantage when you set him into motion and, and the way he's made for his frame, the amount of muscle that he has compa and compared to the frame that he has. Moving on to our third place steer. This is a steer that just gives up a little bit in terms of base width, circumference of bone, and not quite the true muscle, and especially in his hip as the steer's above him or show ring eye appeal, but I appreciate how sound he is, how long bodied he is. Congratulations to each of you. Placing first with the blue ribbon is Peyton Dugan, second with the red ribbon, Seth Painter, and third with the white ribbon, Taylor Barrett. Our next entries in the ring are Briar Moss from Swan Ponds 4-H Club. Then we have Hunter Dunham from Hedgesville's FFA chapter. She's moving. 
Then we have Cooper Knott from the Scrabble Scrabblers 4-H Club and Savannah Jenkins also from the Scrabble Scramblers 4-H Club. A nice pair of feeder calves to lead off this class. The steer that wins a class is, uh, I realize, he may be a little more moderate in his overall frame compared to our second place steer. With that said, when you when you get down and look down his spine, this steer has a huge back on him. I love that he carries it all the way to the apex of his scapula. I like when you analyze him from the side view, the capacity that he has. You get behind him, he's opened up from stifle to stifle. Has a lot of circumference of bone. A lot of nice parts to that steer. As we move on to our second place steer, like I said, there's a little more size and scale to this steer, I believe. I think when he finishes, he's going to be more adequate in his frame score. With that said, he just gives up a little bit of power. The center portion of his body all the way through. The steer that wins a class has a little bit of an advantage in terms of overall true muscle. Two really nice steers, though. It'll be competitive down the road. As we move on to our third place steer, this white steer I think is going to be a good feeding steer. I love his capacity. He's got some true muscle in the center portion of his quarter. When you analyze that though, he's a little bit sloped from hooks to pins. Gives up a little bit in terms of circumference of bone to the two steers above him. But that's a good feeding fat steer. I love his capacity and depth of body. And the steer that wraps up the class just gives up a little bit in terms of base width. Overall true muscle, but I appreciate how long he is and how, how sound he is when you set him into motion. Please give him a round of applause. A nice set of calves.
placing first in that class is Cooper Knott with the blue ribbon. Second with the blue ribbon is Briar Moss. Third with a red ribbon is Savannah Jenkins. And fourth with a white ribbon is Heather or Hunter Dunham. Our next group is Blake Butler from Arden's 4-H Club. Then we have Blaine Barges from Hedgesville Chargers 4-H Club. Then we have Chloe Burkhart from the Valley Star 4-H Club. Paige Knott from Scrabble Scramblers 4-H Club. And Rebecca Fox from Tomahawks 4-H Club. This is your class. As soon as we get a winner for this class, we'll need to have Peyton Dugan and Cooper Knott bring their feeder calves back to show for Grand and Reserve feeder calf. And then we're taking a 10 minute break.
Here's a nice pair of steers to, to end this feeder calf division, the last class of this division. Um, this, this smoky steer that wins a class, I just think he wins it from a sheer power standpoint. He's got more quarter in the lower portion of his leg compared to the second place steer. I think there's more internal dimension. He's got a bigger top on him. I like the angle to his shoulder. I realize that it protrudes just a little bit, but boy, it's got a just a perfect 45 degree angle on it. A, a lot of nice parts about this steer. I'll, I'll say that this steer will have to be shown right, and you'll have to keep hair on him because he's he, he can give you a little bit of a coarse appearance every now and then in his jump muscle and over his crest. But with that said, there's a lot of nice parts about this steer. He balances out nice on the profile from fore flank to hind flank. He's got a big stifle in him. Again, he's got a big top. He carries his quarter down low well. He's extended through his front one-third. A lot of nice pieces, but young lady, you'll have to keep showing him right. Keep that loin dipped a little bit. Keep all four underneath of him, and that changes that steer completely. Nice steer to win the class. We move on to our second place steer. This is a steer that's really elegant and extended through his front one-third. I like how deep-bodied he is. He's got some muscle, but not enough to get any higher in this class. I just think he gives up a little bit in terms of base width and the amount of muscle he has in his lower portion of his quarter specifically. And when he walks away from me, he gives up too much to get any higher in this class. But that's a nice, well-made steer. Moving on to our third and fourth place steers, I think that they stand where they are just simply because they're the most comparable to the, to the second place steer in this drive. Young man with the third place steer, this is a steer that has some muscle. He's got him presented pretty nice today. He's got some capacity. He just doesn't have any of the extras in terms of circumference of bone and base width to get any higher in this class. And we say the same thing about the young lady's black steer that's in fourth. Just not quite as powerful and doesn't quite have the bone and the muscle to go with his frame. I do appreciate how deep bodied he is. I think he'll be a good feed converter. And the young lady on the far end just gives up a little bit of show ring eye appeal to get any higher in this class. Maybe not the amount of bone and muscle to go with the frame that he has today. But that's, that, that's a nice sound steer when you set him into motion. Please give each of them a round of applause. A nice class of steers. Placing first in this class with a blue ribbon, Paige Knott. Second with a blue ribbon, Blake Butler. Third with a red ribbon, Blaine Barges. Fourth with a red ribbon, Chloe Burkhard, and fifth with a white ribbon, Rebecca Fox. We'll now show for grand and reserve champion market or feeder calf. We have Peyton Dugan, Cooper Knott, and Paige Knott. Our feeder calf champion will receive a cash award given by Keith and Dawn Pingley and their family. They'll receive a banner from Hilltop Feed, and that's the Pecones. The reserve champion will receive a cash award from Keith and Dawn Pingley and their family, and a banner from Hilltop Farm, and that's the Morgans.
It's a nice class of feeder steers to, to wrap up your feeder calf show. Uh, these are three completely different steers. We've got a mousy colored steer to my far right that's a little greener in his makeup, just a little farther behind in, in terms of weight per day of age, and he, pro he probably is younger, just a little too green to get any to be in consideration for championship drive, but he definitely wins his class with authority, I thought, and that's a nice calf that just needs time. As we look at our next two steers, to me it comes down to the black steer and the, and the white steer. These two steers are different. There's a, I think there's a significant difference in overall frame. I think that the, the steer in the center, I wonder, he, he's a little quick in his appearance to me in terms of he's a little short coupled, a little shorter in his skull, but beyond the, the overall frame, when you analyze him for, for what he is today, this calf has a huge back. He's really wide from his pin set to the top of his shoulder. He's got a huge back on him. You look at him from the side view, you like his capacity. Looks like he's got the right angles. He doesn't move perfect off those back two, but he does seem to fill his stride. I'd like to see him set him down a little softer. When you get behind him and look at him, there's a lot of muscle in this calf, especially from stifle to stifle. When, he get, when you watch him move, it protrudes. You can tell there's a lot of muscle there. Um, and when you look at his angles, like the angle to a scapula, he's got a good, good angle to it. I just question his size a little bit to me. Again, I think he's a little quick in his overall makeup. I'd like to see him set those passengers down a little better, and he could just be nervous at this stage of the game. The steers can only be out so much. Maybe this is the first time he's been out, and that, that could get better as he relaxes. And then the smoke steer, a different kind of steer, and a comment in his class, he'll have to be shown right, because he'll want to give you a round appearance to his hip when you analyze him from hooks to pins. He wants to, to give you a, an appearance that he's a little coarser fronted, but like I commented in class, I do like the angle to his shoulder, but because that shoulder sticks out of shade, it, you tend to want to gravitate your eye to his heart girth and, and think maybe he's a little tighter in his heart girth. But this steer is shown right if he cooperates and she gets his head in the right position, dips his loin. There's a, a lot of nice parts to this steer. I think when you get his feet underneath of him, you like the angle he moves as what well, he moves better than anything in this drive. There's probably more true muscle in that calf when you get behind him from the standpoint of his stifle and his quarter than anything in the class. I think he gives up some levelness when you compare him to the black steer in front of him in terms of his spine and how it goes into his shoulder. Just kind of a give and take on either one of these. You could make a case for either one and, and I couldn't argue too much. I'm going to pick the one that I think is the best today and I'd love to see him in a year and then, then really make my mind up. But Either one of these two would deserve to win this feeder calf drive. Again, I'm going to choose the one that I think is the best today in terms of scale and combination when he's presented right, and that's going to be your gray one. That'll be your champion feeder steer. Congratulations. Congratulations, Paige Knott. And if we could have Blake Butler's. As we look at our second out of that class that comes in to, that we look at for reserve champion, that's a really nice made steer. I, I think he's, he's really attractive. He's kind of elegant in his makeup, but he still has some muscle and some turn to his top. I just think he gives up a little, little bit of overall power when you look at down his loin and, and study him from behind compared to the steer that wins our second class. The steer that wins the second class will be a reserve champion. Congratulations to each of you. Congratulations, Cooper. Not. We're going to take a 10 minute break and then we'll be back to start the market steers.
This is your five minute call and we will resume the beef show. Five minute call. Five minutes. We're ready to start our market steer class. We've got some lightweight steers that we're going to start with. And our first section has six entries. So come on in. Nicholas Byers from Mount Aries 4 H Club. Nobody's underweight. These are all available for sale. This is your lightweight division. We have light, medium, and heavyweight. Okay. So then we have Taylor Horn from Hedgesville's FFA chapter. And I forgot to mention that Nicholas's steer weighs 966. Taylor Horn from Hedgesville's FFA chapter weighs 986.
คะสกายเลอร์เลย์เอทส์ฟรอมวัลลีสตาร์สฟอร์ทคลับสเตียร์เวย์สไนน์ไนน์ยี่สิบสี่ฮันนาแคมบีฟรอมทอมาฮอกส์ฟอร์ทคลับเวย์สเทนเทนท์เดนวีฮัฟคาเคลียเอทส์ฟรอมวัลลีสตาร์สฟอร์ทคลับและนั่นสเตียร์เวย์ส์1024และรีดมิลเลอร์จากวัลลีสตาร์ส4 h คลับเวย์ส์1058นี่คือคลาสของคุณนี่คือคลาสของคุณทอรีเฮนรีลินซีฟินช์เอลีแคมบีดักโคดามังคลายน์แคมบีและโอเวนมิลล์ทุกของนี้จะมีสำหรับเปิดในกระเป๋าคุณถ้าคุณมีเงินที่เพียงพอที่จะซื้อเงินในวันคุณรู้ไหมถ้าคุณเคยเป็นส่วนหนึ่งของการจัดงานแบบนี้คุณรู้ไหมคุณรู้ว่ามันต้องใช้เวลาและการทำงานและนี่เป็นงานที่ทำโดยประชาชนและคุณทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุกคนทำงานทุ
the fourth and fifth place steers. This is a trio of steers that you could place them however you want. They're all similar in their frame. They're all similar in their capacity, similar in the amount of condition and muscle they have. Just some minor differences that separate them, maybe in terms of structure or length of front or cleanliness coming out of the chest floor. But all three of them are very similar in a toss-up. The blue roan steer that, that wraps up the class, this is a beautiful colored steer, but probably due to his breed, his short horns can tend to be a little harder to finish. He's just too far behind everything else in the class in terms of condition to get any higher. Nice set of steers. Please give these individuals a round of applause. First, finishing play, first and receiving a blue ribbon in this class is Hannah Camby. Second with a red, red ribbon is Nicholas Byers. Third with a red ribbon, Reed Miller. Fourth with a white ribbon, Callie Yates. Fifth with a white ribbon, Skylar Yates. And sixth with a white ribbon, Taylor Horn. Our entries in this class, starting from your far right, we have Tori Henry from Hedgesville Spring Mills FFA chapter. Then we have Lindsay Fitch from Spring Mills FFA chapter. 14 is Eli Canby from Tomahawks 4-H Club. Then we have Dakota Mung from Spring Mills FFA chapter. Clayton Canby from Tomahawks 4-H Club and Ellen Miller from Valley Far Star 4-H Club. If you're just joining us, our judge today is John Bob Spike, Spiker, who is a graduate of WVU with a bachelor's degree in agriculture, business, and economics. John used to serve as president of the West Virginia Angus Association and is currently president of the West Virginia Livestock Roundup, which is the longest running sale of its kind in the United States. He resides in Jane Lou with his family his wife, Kate, and their daughters. So welcome, John Bob.
All right, I think we, that we have a steer that wins this class pretty handily in my mind, and maybe not initially you get that take on this steer, but when, when this young man sets his steer up on the side profile, he's really level spined. He balances out good from fore flank to hind flank. I like how deep bodied he is. He's got some true muscle dimension from his pin set up to his jump muscle, and he has some thickness in the center portion of his quarter. That's just the most balanced steer in my mind. He's not quite as finished as our second place steer. This is a steer that's a little more, obviously a little more moderate in his frame. When you get behind him, he's comparable in the amount of muscle that steer that wins a class, just not as a smooth of a package, but for his frame, he's probably, probably the best finished in the class, and his frame being the way it is allows him to be that way. Our third place steer, this is a steer that's not as level made, maybe from the side view as the two steers that win it. When you get behind him, he's adequate in the amount of thickness he has. He's got a smooth pattern to him from a three-quarter view. I like the, the way he's beginning to lay down his finish and the fashion that he's doing it, just not quite as attractive as the two that beat him. As we move, the next steer, as we move on to the next steer, the young man in the white shirt has. This is a steer that has a huge back on him. He's really wide wide loin. When you get your hands on him, he's really raw to the touch. It's one that just needs more time to me. I think for his frame and his size, you could maybe deepen him up a little bit, maybe make him a little bit wider based, but he is an attractive steer in his own right. As we move on to this two steers at the bottom of the class, just give up a little bit of levelness, show ring eye appeal. The steer that, that comes up next, the brown tinted steer, is a little wider base than our bottom place steer. But these are two steers that are sound that just need a little more time on feed. Please give him a round of applause. Placing first with the blue ribbon is Eli Canby. Second with the red ribbon, Tori Henry. Third with the red ribbon, Dakota Mung. Fourth with the red ribbon, Clayton Canby. Fifth with the white ribbon, Lindsay Finch. And sixth with the white ribbon, Owen Miller. Our next group of lightweights in the ring include Samuel Canby. And Samuel is part of Tomahawk's 4-H Club. And Samuel's steer weighs 11.22. I think I forgot that in the last class. Then we have Mackenzie Yates from Valley Stars 4-H Club. And her steer weighs 11.30. Then we have Caitlin Linton from Musselman's FFA chapter with a steer that weighs 11.60. And then we have Grant Bolliard from Appalachian Clovers 4-H Club, also weighing 1160. Then we have Brett Mung from Spring Mills FFA Chapter, 1162. And Julie Snyder, Spring Mills FFA Chapter, 1164. If you want to do some comparison, look at those two middle steers. They weigh the same, th same weight, but you wouldn't know it by looking at them. They look completely different. When we get finished this, we will have our grand and reserve champion market steer. So Hannah and Lee, Eli, if you'll have your lightweight steers at ringside after we get a winner for this class.
We're going to begin us with this class with a steer that I think excels initially on the side profile. He's the deepest bodied. He balances out well on a side, side profile with a strong top. He's extended enough through the front one third. He's clean up through his throat latch. I like the angle to his shoulder. I like when you get a three quarter view of him that he's got some spring of rib. When you look down his spine, he's got some turn to his top. I like how deep he is in his twist. Just a really well balanced good appearing steer to win this class. I think he could stand some competition on, on down the road. A little more time on feed maybe, but that, that's an awful complete steer. As we move on to our second place steer, I think he's the most comparable in terms of completeness. This is a level spine one. Doesn't, doesn't give you the look from the side as a steer that wins a class. Not quite as deep, deep bodied or doesn't quite have the capacity or maybe the true muscle. But with that said, this is a big top one. Very level spine, has some circumference of bone and, and I think nicely matches up to our, the steer that wins this class when you get behind him in terms of the amount of muscle he has. As we move on to our third place steer, again, this is one that is the most comparable to our second place steer. When you get behind him, he's probably the, the third thickest in the class. He's probably got the third widest top in the class. He's flexible. He just doesn't line up and do, just doesn't give you that show ring eye appeal of the two above him. Maybe not quite as wide at his pin set as the two above him, but a nice free moving steer in his own right. 
the red steer that comes in next this is one that you like him from behind you like the width that his pin set i just like to see him carry it down farther in his lower one third maybe make him a little deeper in his twist a little deeper in his flank and clean up his chest floor just as just a shade from the side profile but that one sure does have a big back on him a lot of length and he's free moving he's a free moving steer as we move on down the line these two steers are very comparable to me they just need a little more base width a little more circumference of bone and a little more time on feed Congratulations to each of you. Please give them a round of applause. A nice class of lightweights. Placing first in this class is Caitlin Linton with a blue ribbon. Placing second, Julie Snyder with a blue ribbon. Third place, Samuel Camby with a red ribbon. Fourth place with a red ribbon, Grant Bolliard. Fifth place with the white ribbon, Brett Mung, and sixth place with the white ribbon, Mackenzie Yates. We now need our class winners for our lightweight division. That would be Hannah Camby, Eli Camby, and Caitlin Linton. And the seconds are on standby. That would be, the seconds would be uh, Nicholas B Byers, Tori Henry, and Julie Snyder. Our lightweight champion receives a cash award from Natasha Van Dyne and LT Puffenberger, and our reserve champion lightweight receives a cash award from Keith and Dawn Pingley and their family. These are three awful complete steers to choose from for your lightweight division. Um, to me, uh, you know, you can wrap it up pretty quick. I think there's one out here that, that profiles the best in terms of capacity and spring a rib, and, and I really appreciate how deep he is in his twist and how he, quarter, he carries his quarter down. Um, one that probably has a, you know, for a lightweight as, as finished better than any, any of the rest of the steers within this drive, and that'll be your silver steer. He'll be your champion lightweight. Congratulations. Our grand champion lightweight is Caitlin Linton, and if we could have Julie Snyder's steer in the ring.
I think the remaining three we have to choose from are all comparable in terms of their phenotypical makeup and, and their angles and their lines. Um, the, the steer that comes in second out of that last class, I think that this is the, the truest steer of these three. I think when you get behind him, he has the most natural muscle and ties it together in a uniform fashion as you analyze him from every angle. You'll be reserve champion in lightweight. Congratulations. Congratulations to Julie Snyder, who's the reserve champion lightweight. We'll take some pictures and then we'll start some medium weight steers. We've got our first class, place, first class of medium weights. We've got Mackenzie Files from Spring Mills FFA chapter, and her steer weighs 1188.
Then we have Tiffany Henry, also from Spring Mills FFA chapter. Her steer also weighs 11.88. Then we have Reese Barrett from Spring Mills FFA with a steer that weighs in at 12.02. Then we have Kayanna Ross from Hedgesville's FFA chapter with a steer that weighs in at 12.08. And Jalen Ross from Hedgesville's FFA chapter with a steer that weighs 1214. This is your class. We have 28 minutes to the poultry showmanship, so just in case you want to plan your afternoon accordingly.
Okay, this is a class that you could show under 20 different judges and probably get 20 different placings. I'm going to do my best to be transparent as, as, as I can to tell you why I have him as I have him. The steer, the, the brockle face steer that wins a class, I think he's just the most complete steer. Um, yes, he's yes for his frame, you'd like to see him a little deeper in, in his rib, a little more capacity. Yes, when you get behind him, you'd like to see him a little thicker. But with that said, he does have some capacity. He does have some handle to him that's a little more preferable compared to some of the ones below him. He does have some muscle to him. He's beautiful up through the front one third. I just think he's more complete from one end to the other than, than any of the steers below him. As we move on to our second place steer, this is a steer that when you look at him from the side, you're going to think he's, he's all guts and, and no muscle. But when you get behind him, there is some true muscle in this steer. He's got, again, all kinds of volume to him, and you expect him to be flatter sided than what he is. Yes, he's not the show steer as the one that won the class, but I think that his qualities, because of the amount of muscle he has and capacity, he has to come in second. He holds it together on a strong spine, and he's fluent when he gets out into motion. The belted steer, this is one that you can't, you can't put at the bottom because he's the most finished steer in the class. You can't put him at the top because he, he has some structure issues when you set him into motion. So for that reason, he lands right in the middle for me. He's, I think that steer's finished. I, I mean, I appreciate that about him. What my issue with him is is when you set him into motion, he wants to get up underneath himself on those back two. He gives up some circumference of bone compared to some of his counterparts, but he does have a lot of muscle and good finish today. I just structurally, I'd like to change him some, especially this pin set. As we move on to the next two, again, this is where you can go on one end or the other. I think the yellow steer for his frame and his capacity and his makeup, he's too flat-sided for me today, a little bit too raw to his touch a little bit too fine bone to get any higher. And the steer that wraps up the class, initially I thought he'd be in the front half easy. But when you get your hands on him, he's really raw to touch and just too, too raw for a middleweight class to get any higher. That steer needs more time than any of them on feed. Please give him a round of applause. A nice set of steers to analyze. That was fun. Placing first, Reese Barrett with a blue ribbon. Second with a red ribbon, Kayanna Ross. Third with a white ribbon, Tiffany Henry. Fourth with a white ribbon, Jalen Ross. And fifth with a white ribbon, Mackenzie Files. Our next entries in the ring is Andrew Bohr from Tomahawks 4-H Club. And his steer weighs 1226. Then we have Brianna Schallier from Musselman's FFA chapter with a steer that weighs 12.32. Then we have Blake Puffenberger from Swan Ponds 4-H Club, 12.38. Taylor Barrett from Scrabble Scramblers 4-H Club, 12.38. And Isaac Camby, Tomahawks 4-H Club, 12.38. That's your class.
This is a nice pair. Of, there we go. This is a nice pair of steers to begin this class with. It's kind of a toss-up. Um, the one that hits you the hardest is the black and white one in terms of his overall show ring look. He's 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 got some substance to him, but he's really really stylish and attractive. I love how he comes out of the top of his shoulder. I love how extended he is through the front one third. I love the profile that he gives you. Um, now, with that said, if a guy is going to judge him from behind, our second place steer wins it easy. This is the biggest butted steer in the class, especially in the center portion of his quarter. He's better in his flank than the steer that wins, in true flank from his jump muscle to his cod. But with that said, he just doesn't balance up as well on the profile. He's not quite as sound out of his front one third. I'd, I'd like to start at his pin bone, make him more level from hooks to pins, make him more level going into his shoulder. And I'd like to set his forearm back just a little bit. He wants to come forward just a shade on it. But that's just, that's, that's the differences that I see in these two. And I'm not going to ignore the fact that you have the thickest calf in this class. I just don't think that he has a structural integrity to beat this black and white one today. But that's a nice steer. Moving on to our third place steer, this is, the most, this is the most comparable steer to our top two steers. This is a smooth pattern steer. There's not a lot of faults when you kind of get a three-quarter view of this steer. He's really smooth as you analyze him into his fore rib and his front one-third. Just not quite the show ring eye appeal, not quite the muscle, and not quite the fluent. He doesn't move quite as fluent as the steer that wins a class, but that's a really nice complete steer that's going to have a nice carcass in the long run. You know, the two red steers that bring up the bottom of the class, the young lady's shorthorn appearing steer. This is a steer with a huge top on him. He's, got a, he's going to have a really big ribeye. He's got some capacity. My issue with him is he's pretty steep off that front one-third. The front of the shoulder blade, the angle of that shoulder blade is pretty steep, and it shows as you analyze him down to his knee. But I do appreciate how big back that calf is. And, and we wrap up the class with a, with a red calf. This young man's doing a great job showing him. He fell in a pretty tough middleweight class. He's just, to me, just a little bit too heavy in his front one-third compared to the rest of his body, especially when you analyze him on the side profile. Needs a little more base width to get any higher in this class. Please give these kids a round of applause. That's a nice class of middleweights. Placing first with a blue ribbon, Andrew Boer. Second with a blue ribbon, Brianne Sawyer. Third with a red ribbon, Isaac Camby. Fourth with a white ribbon, Taylor Barrett. And fifth with a white ribbon, Blake Puffenberger. Our last group of medium weights, we have Lacey Linton from the New Seekers 4-H Club. Then we have uh, Lacey Steer weighs 1260. If you want to do the math for that, at $5 a pound, she wants far more than $5 a pound, I can tell you. You could do that math. Reagan Barrett from Spring Mills FFA. Her steer, too, weighs 1260. She, too, wants more than $5 a pound. Then we have Briar Moss from Swan Ponds 4-H Club, 1262. Then we have Ridge Ross from Hedgesville's FFA chapter, 1270. And our last injury in the class is Cheyenne Stickles from Scrabble Scramblers 4-H Club, 1286. That's your class. I think all of these folks would like more than $5 a pound for their animals. Just throwing that out there as a starting point. Never mind, forget that $5. You gotta buy by the head. So they'll take 5,000 and then you can start from there.
We've got a good steer to begin this second class of medium weights. This is a steer that just excels in, in overall muscle and, and capacity and width to top and turn to his top. When you, when you get behind this steer, there's no question he's the thickest ended. He has a most in the center portion of his rib cage. He sets down on one of the softest pasterns. I realize he gets a little bit high in the center of his spine when you set him into motion, but that's, that's getting picky. He brings a lot to the table today and wins the class pretty handily, I think. As we move on to our second place steer, Let's move on to our second place steer. This is an awful complete shorthorn steer. I realize the steer that comes in third has a little more capacity. There's a little more finish on that steer, but how the red steer beats him to me is when you set him into motion, I think he's thick enough. I think he's deep enough. I like his skeletal makeup because he's level spined and has good angles. He can navigate around, around the ring pretty well, and that's probably my issue with this third place steer. I love the capacity on this steer. I like how wide he is up high in his quarter. I'd like to see him carry it down a little better when you get behind him for how wide he is at, at his pin set. I'd like to see him a little wider, a little more muscle in the lower part of his leg. And then when you set him into motion, he just wants to get outside of himself a little bit too much on his back two when he's moving to get any higher in this class. That's a nice calf. A different guy might see that different, but today that's how I see him. That is a nice steer. As we move on to our, our last two steers in the class, the Hereford and then the, the, the brown appearing steer, these steers just need, a, just need to be a little wider based and a little more substance to them when you get behind them, especially in her twist area when you look at them to get any higher in this class. This, this Hereford steer is going to look good on the rail, just not wide enough based or not enough substance of bone to go with his frame and makeup to get any higher. Please give him a round of applause. A nice class of steers. Placing first in this class with the blue ribbon, Cheyenne Stickles. And she'll be back for grand champion middleweight, medium weight. Placing second with a blue ribbon, Reagan Barrett, and she's on deck. Placing third with a blue ribbon, Briar Moss. Fourth with a white ribbon, Lacey Linton. And fifth with a white ribbon, Ridge Ross. We need to have our medium weights into the ring. We have three entries that will be showing for grand champion. We have Reese Barrett with a steer that weighs 12.02. We have Andrew Boer with a steer that weighs 12.26. And Cheyenne Stickle's steer weighs 12.86. If you finish second in these classes, be on call. After pictures, we'll start our heavyweights. And then we'll be. Our middleweight or mediumweight champion will receive a cash award by Butler Farms and our reserve champion will also receive a cash award by Butler Farms. This is, when you look at these three class winners to choose our 
medium weight champion. I, I think that this is another scenario of it just going to it's going to boil down to what what your judge wants to put the most emphasis on. To me, it comes down to our second and third place class winners, or our second and third class winners to, to choose your champion in this drive. Your your black and white steer, he's obviously the most attractive steer in the class. He's he's really elegant up to his front one third. I love his extension. I like his angles. He gives you a really good look from the side. Um, my, my issue is, that, you know, he, when you compare him to steer behind him, he doesn't quite have the finish. He would set inside of that steer from a muscle standpoint, but boy, is he pretty. I mean, you couldn't get a, you couldn't get a more attractive profile and show steer looking. Steer. There hasn't been one in the ring today that's been that attractive, and he's better in his spinal makeup than the steer that came out of that last class. With that said, this is definitely the powerhouse steer within this middleweight drive. Maybe not doesn't give you the show ring eye appeal as a steer that won the second class, but you get behind him. You can't deny the amount of true muscle that he has. This one's going to look pretty good on the rail. When he moves away from you, he's the widest base steer in the class. Even though he gets a little high in his spine when he walks, he's soft, on his, soft enough on his pasterns. To me, there's just too much product there to not use that steer to win your middleweight division. He'll be your champion middleweight. Congratulations, Cheyenne Stickles, our middleweight champion. And we need to have Reagan Barrett's steer back at ringside for reserve champion. The rest of you stay. Entering the ring is Reagan Barrett, and her steer weighs 1260. Your red steer that comes in second in that class, this is a steer that deserved to be there just from a completeness standpoint. That's a complete steer. Yes, he could be a little soggier middled. Yes, you'd like to see a little more power. But boy, he's smooth pattern with what he has. He fills his stride. He's strong top. He's got an adequate amount of thickness in it in him and he deserves to be here. We resort back to your, your black and white steer. I think it's between those two to me. That's a, that, again, this is an awful pretty steer. Um, just not enough power to win that division. He, he, when you get back and analyze him, I'd like to make him a little bit wider base, give him a little flank, and, and you can tell he needs a little bit of that because the amount of detail that they've put into to dressing that steer, but easily the prettiest steer that's been out here today. I think that he deserves to be your reserve middleweight. Congratulations. Our reserve champion, Andrew Bohr. Congratulations. We're going to take a few pictures and then we'll start our heavyweights. And our first heavyweight class has five entries Lindsay Wall, Hunter, Mark Hunter, Andrew Chapman, Paige Knotts, and Savannah Jenkins.
Our first group of market steers has five entries in it. And the first one is Lindsay Walls. And Lindsay's from Spring Mills FFA chapter and her steer weighs 1296. Then we have Mark Hunter from Swan Ponds Voyage Club and that's 1306. Then we have Andrew Chapman from Mount Airy Winners 4-H Club and that steer weighs 1324. Then we have Paige Knott from the Scrabble Scramblers 4-H Club. That steer weighs 1326. And then we have Savannah Jenkins from the Scrabble Scramblers 4-H Club 1358. This is your class of heavyweights. This is the first class and then we'll go into the second class. And then we'll show for the heavyweight division. While he's looking over this class, I would like to thank the Steer Show Award sponsors. The list is lengthy, but we'll, we'll start it, and if we don't get it finished by the end, we'll finish it up. We have an award given in memory of Janice Cloud, Mid-Atlantic Farm Credit, Farmers and Mechanics Insurance Company, Jeff and Shelley Shoppard, the Golden Wool Farm, and that's Tammy Ware and her family, MVB Bank, the Jim Moore family, that's M&M Simitals, Berkeley County Farm Bureau, Natasha Van Dyne and LT Puffenberger, Keith and Dawn Pingley and their family, Windy Rock Farm, that's George and Brenda Miller, we've got Butler's Farm, Walls Vault Service, Arden Equipment and Repair, the Patriot Auto Center, we have the SC Beard the Third Memorial, Matco Tools, that's JR and Christina Barrett, Jefferson Security Bank, Hilltop Feeds, that's the Pancones. We've got Matt Ware. We have the Hilltop Feed, that's the Morgans. An, an award given in memory of Ernest C. Van Meter, Harry and Dorothy Snow. Southern States, the Knott family, Shepherdstown Pharmacy, uh, the Ned Moore Morrow Memorial, and that's given by Berkeley County's Farm Bureau, the Boyd Cattle Show Cattle, and that's John Boyd, DMV, and Scott Boyd, and the Byers Dairy Farm, Ben Byers Memorial by the family. Thanks to all of those who have sponsored the Beef Awards. How about a round of applause for those sponsors? And of course, Scott Boyd for chairing the Beef Show.
it's a nice these top four steers are awful nice steers they can go to a lot of a lot of county fairs and do some damage i think and and to me, I, I think we're going to begin with what I'm going to call the most complete one. I think this is the smoothest pattern when, when you analyze him from his pin set to the top of his shoulder. He's the biggest back one, and he's the most uniformed in the makeup and the turn to his top as he ties into the top of his shoulder. When you get at him on a profile, he's the most balanced on his underline. And probably not the most massive, or there's some in here a little bigger bone, but this is the most complete steer in my mind. He doesn't let you down when you get your hands on him. I like how level hipped he is. I like how wide he is at his pin set. And that's a separation to me when you compare him to a second place steer. This steer gives you a great look. There's a lot of nice pieces this steer. Young man has him, he's got him presented well and shown him nice. But I think he could be a little longer coupled. He gives you a little bit of a rounder look from hooks to pins. He's not quite as extended and level as an orange steer when you look at him in that area. And I don't think from the center of his back to the top of his shoulder, he's a square and his big back going into that section. But those are two really nice steers, as well as a third place steer. This is a nice steer. This is probably the biggest ended steer in the class when you get right up on him. My issue with this steer is when you look at him from the profile, he's just a little too heavy chested, a little too heavy fronted for that amount of capacity and muscle I'd sure like to give him a bigger foot but with that said this this steer's got a lot of product he's going to look good on the rail just phenotypically gives up a little bit of attractiveness to his front one third and a little bit of bone makeup compared to the two above him the white legged steer this is a nice steer for a fourth place steer you get behind him he's got some muscle to him I just think on the on the profile he, he gives up a little bit of his overall balance and, and profile he could use a little bit of flank to get any higher in this class but that's that's a nice steer in his own right and the steer on the bottom of the class is one that just needs a, needs a little more attention. It's hard for one like this. Is that he's a little plainer made, a little, so, a little flatter made to get any higher in this class. Just not quite the show steer as the four above him, but really nice set of steers. That's a fun class to analyze. Give him a round of applause, please. Placing first with a blue ribbon, Mark Hunter. Second also with a blue ribbon, Andrew Chapman. Third with a blue ribbon, Savannah Jenkins. Fourth with a red ribbon, Lindsay Wall. And fifth with a white ribbon, Paige Knott. We have one more class of heavyweights. Entering the ring is Summer Weaverling from Musselman's FFA chapter. And her steer weighs 1366. Then we have Caleb Fox, Back Creek Valley Mountaineers 4-H Club, with a steer that weighs 1376. Then we have Lane Gosnell from Tomahawks 4-H Club, 1388. Then we have Brianna Jenkins from the Scrabble Scramblers 4-H Club with a steer that weighs 1392. And our last entry in the class is Spencer Byers from Mount Aries 4-H Club, and this steer weighs 
This is a tough one with these top two steers. I'll be the first to admit, these are two really good steers, easily the best two steers in the class. When you start breaking them down, it really gets challenging. You, they got enough muscle, both of them are thick, both of them handle okay. I, I think that your second place steer handles a, just a tick stale to me, but they've, they've reached a nice end weight. Um, I guess what separates them to me is, is when you get on the profile, I really like how the yellow one balances out. I think he's truer in his heart. I like his depth of body. I like his springer rib better than the black steer. On a structure, from a structural standpoint, it's a, it's a coin flip. This, this yellow one, he doesn't move the best. He gets out of himself on his back too a little bit. And as well as a black steer, when you, when you watch him in motion, that, that front left, he wants to get on the outside of his pad. He wants to be upright a little bit on his back pasterns. So when you throw everything in the pot, there's not a huge separation there. I think that I give the advantage to the yellow steer. He's a little deeper flanked. He's a little bit leveler over the hip. He's a little bit truer in his heart girth, but that's not a big separation. Both of these are really good steers. They kind of have some of the same faults. I give the advantage in the center portion of the rib to the yellow one to win this class, and he's a little bit better in his heart girth, and, and that's just how I see him. I mean, you could argue those two all day long. We're going to pull the trigger eventually, but that's the advantage I give the yellow steers, his overall capacity. Two really nice steers. As we move on to our third place steer, this one sure, sure finished well. I'd say he's he maybe 13 o'clock, if you, if you want to call it that for lack of better words. But this is a, this is a well-made steer, just not the show steer or two above him. He doesn't give you that oomph when you get behind him in the center portion of his quarter that the top two do. And then the bottom, the two steers wind up the class. They're similar in their design. They're both similar in their frame and their overall makeup. Maybe don't have the overall thickness and, and base width to get any higher in this class. But those two steers, they're going to look good on the rail. Just not the show steers today to get any higher in this class. Placing first in this class with the blue ribbon, Brianna Jenkins. Second with the blue ribbon, Kayla Fox. Third with a red ribbon, Summer Weaverly. Fourth with a white ribbon, Spencer Byers. And fifth with a white ribbon, Lance Gosnell. We will now show for Grand Champion Heavyweight Division. We have two entries. Mark Hunter with his steer that weighs 13.06. And Brianna Jenkins. Brianna Jenkins with her steer that weighs thirteen ninety two. These are your heavyweight options for champion and reserve. After we take a few pictures, we'll, take, we'll then show for grand champion market steer, and we're going to need to have Caitlin Linton's lightweight, uh, Sky Ann's stickles medium weight, and our heavyweight champion to the ring. We've got two nice heavyweight steers here to choose from for your heavyweight division. The, the darker orange steer, I think, is a really well-balanced steer. There's been steers that are maybe thicker that have come out here today. There's definitely been some steers with bigger bone and, and maybe, maybe fuzzier steers that look different, but I don't think they're 
within that division there's been a more complete steer. I, I like how balanced he is over his hip, how level he is from hooks to pins. I like how he comes into the top of his shoulder and he comes out high out of that. I like the angle to his shoulder. He's pretty extended and balanced in terms of the length in his front one third compared to his frame. I like his capacity. I like when you set him into motion, he moves relatively well. He gets a little soft on those front pasterns, specifically his front right when he walks, but I do like his angles. That's just a really complete one. We move on to the steer that won that last class. This is a powerhouse steer. I, I think he wins that, that division just simply, or that class, just simply because of his center gauge. He just made better going into his heart girth, and he's just got more capacity. A lot of product in that steer. He sure needs to navigate around the ring a little better to, to win this division. So we're going to use young man to my right to win the heavyweight division. Congratulations, Mark Hunter. And if we could have Andrew Chapman steer into the ring. That was, a, that was a really close class that, this, that our champion heavyweight came out of. I thought that class was three and maybe even four deep. And I, I think it'd be awful hard to separate this steer from the one that beat him in class. Those are two awful nice steers. This will be your reserve heavyweight. Congratulations. Our reserve heavyweight is Andrew Chapman. Congratulations to all of the exhibitors. We'll take some pictures and then we'll come back for overall Grand and Reserve Champion Market Steer. I forgot to mention that our heavyweight champion received a cash award given by Boyd Show Cattle. That's John Boyd, DMV, and Scott Boyd. And the reserve champion received a cash award given by the same Boyd Show Cattle, John Boyd, DMV, and Scott Boyd.
Just a reminder to the Beef Showman, we do have a Beef Herdsman Award that's given out. Those are cash awards, and as well as a plaque for our first place winners. We've got first, second, and third places, and they are given in memory of Ernest C. Van Meter by Windy Rock Farm. That's George and Brenda Miller. So, thank you. champion market steer. We've got three entries. In our lightweight we have Caitlin Linton. In our medium weight we have Cheyenne Stickle. And our heavyweight is Mark Hunter. Our grand champion market steer will receive a cash award by Walls Vault Service, a trophy by Arden Equipment, a jacket by Patriot Auto Center, a banner by Windy Rock Farm, that's George and Brenda Miller. Their name will appear on a rotating plaque that's given in memory of Ned Morrow, who was the auctioneer of the sale for many, many years. And that's given by Berkeley County's Farm Bureau. And we also have a gift from Southern States. Our reserve champion market steer will receive a cash award given in memory of S.C. Beard III, a trophy by Arden Equipment Repair, a jacket by Matt Code Toys, that's J.R. and Christina Barrett, and a banner given by Jefferson Security Bank. Please give these exhibitors, as well as the ones in the back, a round of applause. I thought this was a really good steer show. There was, there was all kinds of variations in types and kind, and we try to kind of get the best combination steers we can, the ones that, that give you the most product at the end, but do it in a, in a show ring fashion. They can carry themselves around, and they're on a good skeletal makeup. Um, we begin with one that I think wins that lightweight division pretty handily, and specifically from the side view. I, I love how deep-bodied this steer is. He's, he's long, uh, long and level-spined. The um, steer just gives you a good look, really extended from his shoulder to his throat latch. Just a lot of nice pieces of that steer. I think he was probably the deepest in his twist of any in that drive, and just a, just a good lightweight division winner. We move on to your middleweight division winner. This is an awfully, awfully thick steer. This steer has really opened up in the center portion of his body from one end to the other. And I, I, I grant it, when you set him into motion, he wants to get high in the center of his back. He doesn't give you that really attractive look from the profile, but when he walks away from you, he walks with some really nice base width. When he relaxes and allows the, girls to show it, the girl to show him well and moves, he'll fill his stride. So it's kind of a give and take with that one. There wasn't a, there wasn't a steer in that division that could compare to him in the amount of product and, and finish and muscle and base width, and he wins that pretty handily in my mind. 
Moving on to your steer that wins a heavyweight division. This is a steer that doesn't, he doesn't blow you away anywhere in my mind. When you get behind him, yes, there were some thicker steers in that drive. When you get to the side view, yes, there were some steers that probably might have been more, more attractive and, and more attractive through the front one third and, and presented a little more bone. With that said, I think this steer is more than adequate in the amount of thickness he has. I think he's, he's pretty good on his feel in terms of condition that he's carrying. Just, he's just so smooth pattern. That's what gets him out of that drive. When you get to a three-quarter view of this steer and analyze him from his pin set all the way up through his heart girth, clear to his pole, he just ties everything together in such a nice fashion. He's boxy, but he has enough extension. He's, he's really big hip. He doesn't have the most lower leg, but he's got enough to me. I love how he balances out in his flank. I really like him from the center of his back forward. He comes out high enough out of the top of his shoulder. Yes, he gets a little bit too soft on his front pastern to me when you set him into motion, but that's getting really picky. That's just an awful complete steer. I don't think there was any steer within that drive that tied everything together as well as he did. But three really nice steers to choose from. I really enjoyed judging this show. I've met a lot of good people from this county and a lot of good kids. These kids all day long have been great to work with and it's a good reflection of the community and the support that they've had from a family level and a leadership level. Just really, you guys got a lot to be proud of here. And uh, again, give these, give these three individuals a round of applause. I'm gonna look at them a little bit longer. We'll pick your champion and then we'll pick your reserve. Um, again, it's been, I really appreciate you having me. It's really been enjoyable. I love sorting the steer show and I hope I've been as transparent as I can as to what I'm seeing. I know you can only make one guy happy and that's the downside to judging, but boy, I do enjoy the process and I, I think you guys have run some good cat on the ring today and even better set of kids. exhibited by Mark Hunter. If we could have, is that Andrew? Andrew Chapman. As our reserve heavyweight division steer comes out, that's a steer that, that came out of a really tough class. I, I told Scott, I thought that was three and maybe four deep. I commend each of those individuals within that class. I think that if that steer's a little bit longer coupled, maybe a little bit wider at his pin set, that, that, that he might he might have won that division. But to me, he was just a little, he wasn't quite as level, level hip. There was extended over his hip as a steer that beats him in that division. But that's an awful close second. I think he's too close not to use him for reserve. So you'll be a reserve champion. Congratulations. Congratulations, Andrew Chapman. That completes this year's show. Congratulations to all of the exhibitors and to the parents and to our judge, Mr. John Bob Spiker. And hey, don't forget to go look for poultry um, showmanship. Have you ever judged that? Poultry? Yeah, poultry you need a showmanship. Do you need, oh no. I know, I want to go see just what it's like. Uh, folks at home on TV 10. Thanks a lot. See you soon.